Tick tock, time to rock! Hold up. I just saw the comments pop up. And the first comment I saw was from Matt. He says, hi guys, did you see Rashid's answer? He is talking about this mystery, this magical gospel that must have been there, but oh my dear, there is no proof of it, but there must be. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Matt, um, maybe, maybe you saw uh, the video earlier when I posted it. I said we were going to be taking uh, comments from the chat. And I, so, I mean, uh, comments from the uh, uh, comment section on the videos where Muslims were offering verses that supposedly refute us but uh then i updated it like 10 or 15 minutes later because uh i saw that rashid uh i mean uh, uh adnan rashid posted another video so i asked sam i said hey should should i go ahead and download this and we'll respond to that instead so yeah we are going to do that but uh adnan's new video unlike his older one is only seven minutes long so that should be much easier to get through um, so the, the plan now, the plan for this live stream is we're going to go through Adnan's brand new response. Same thing as before. We're going to go through everything Adnan says and see if he's actually making sense of this for us. And then after that, we'll just be taking comments from the chat. So I see the Muslims who are in the chat right now. Muslims, uh, I've invited you to get the best of the best. <coughs> Yeah. Sadly, some of what you think is the best of the best is already going to be demolished when we go through Adnan's response. But uh, <laughs> maybe you got something that we're just not aware of. All right, with me right now is the Assyrian Encyclopedia, Triple B, Shameless, <clears throat> Sam Shimon. Now, Sam, did you uh, did you watch Adnan's video? You know, I'd be lying to you if I did. Someone gave me a rundown of it, and that's his argument was the gospel is not the same thing as the New Testament. So I said, oh, typical. So you actually haven't seen it? Nope. So he, I I Anand actually brought up many points. So we might actually catch the great Sam Shamoon off guard and see him get stumped and embarrassed live. <laughs> Yeah, you, you like I said, I rarely listen to these guys unless I have to. So I uh -huh. said, all right, let's do it. So I mean, hey man, it's stump the chump, and I'm the biggest <laughs> chump according to Haterwood. All right, we're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens when Sam Shimon gets caught off guard by Adnan <laughs> Rashid. So basically, Sam, uh, again, it's about a seven-minute video. I chopped them up into, I, I think, seven or eight parts. And so roughly one minute each, maybe a little shorter, maybe a little longer. But we'll go through the entire thing, the entire thing, and we'll see. Now, now keep, so keep in mind, keep in mind the uh, the progress here. We, uh, well, I post, I posted a video last Tuesday, so one week ago, I posted a video asking Muslims for one unequivocal verse, saying that the gospel has been corrupted. Sam, we've gone through two entire video responses from Muslim YouTube apologists. Have we seen anything that comes within a thousand miles of a Quran verse claiming that the gospel has been corrupted? The only thing we've seen is how they utterly surprised us by the fact of agreeing with your position. Surprise, David. Surprise, I agree with you. That's what it's that's it. They can bring your position. <laughs> Surprise, David Wood is right. <laughs> that was it. That's the only thing that shocked me, that they actually confirmed the very point you were making. So glory to Jesus Christ, the risen Lord of glory, the Son of the Most High. Praise his name. Here's, Dan Spirit. Here's Daniel Clow. I'm not sure Clow. exactly how to pronounce his name, but I want to think that it's Claw. In which case, dude, I would totally get a doctorate and be Dr. Claw. <laughs> you remember that, Sam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember Dr. Claw? Huh? Yeah, but I don't see his name. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah but I don't, where do you see this guy? Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget, man. Oh, there it goes. It just came out. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Dan Claw. It's Claw, but yeah, hey, he, he can be he, Dr. Claw. Uh, yeah, he's I'll into all... Gotcha. Yeah, uh, Dan Claw is actually... Uh, he's up in Canada, but he's into all kinds of uh, like virtual reality stuff. Like like mm. like pro like programming the stuff. Um, and we, here, we have, uh, here we have our good Muslim friend, Ahmed who says, David Wood is a joke, ha ha ha. A joke yeah, yeah. that is yeah. sending Muslim apologists scrambling for answers only to have those answers get smacked down. See guys, you, look, Ahmed, you, you're doing this all wrong. You should be portraying me and Sam Shamoon as these super geniuses who are empowered with a demonic presence that gives us <laughs> supernatural reasoning abilities 
in order to explain why your apologists are getting wrecked right here. When you say when you say David Wood is a joke or Sam Shamoon's a joke, and then we wreck your top apologists, what does that say about your top apologists if people who are mere jokes, if people who are mere jokes can wreck your guys? What does that say? All right. Right? All right, what does Sam. What does that say, man? And we're no William Lane Craig either. But go ahead. That's right. Um, anyone, uh, anyone you want to say hi to, give a shout out to in the chat? Man, I see a lot of people. If I single some out and ignore the rest, they'll probably be hurt and they'll block themselves you. from my channel. They're going to hate you. Yeah, they'll you. block themselves from my channel, so I don't want to do that. But you know who you are and love all of you. God bless you. The Lord Jesus bless you. The Holy Spirit fill you and fill us and wash us in the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way for the glory of Jesus Christ. All Razzles. Right, guys. Why is that name familiar, Razzles? All right, guys. Hey, Razzle, uh, why don't you just let, let me say, hey, Razzle, why don't you just give him my you know, full name, my social security, where I live? You know, it's all right. Okay, go ahead. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and jump into these clips real quick. You ready, Shameless? By the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we're always ready as long as the Holy Spirit blesses us and anoints us and takes over. So we're asking the Holy Spirit to take over, to glorify Jesus and that we fall more in love with Jesus Christ. So let's do it. As long as the Spirit's in it, let's do it. All right. Now, uh, uh, sometimes we chat a little bit longer here at the beginning, but I'm thinking if we actually jump right into these clips, we can get through Adnan's uh, arguments fairly quickly, and then we could get to uh, some of the uh, Muslims who want to challenge us in the chat, in the chat. All right. So we're going to go and jump into these. And again, Sam has not seen <laughs> Sam has not seen these, so he's about to get caught off guard. And Sam, that means you'd better be listening carefully. In fact, Sam, since you'll be listening to these clips for the first time on a delay, just ignore what I'm saying until the clip is done that you're hearing. You know what I mean? All right, bro. All right. So just ignore what I say when the clip is done because you'll be hearing. Focus on Ed Nunn. All right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Adnan Rashid. So David would ask this question. Give me one unequivocal statement that states that the gospel, mark the words, the gospel is corrupt. I repeat his question. Give me one unequivocal statement in the Quran that states that the gospel is corrupt. Let me give you the shock. The Quran does not state that the gospel is corrupt. The Quran does not say that the gospel is corrupted or changed or altered. The Quran states that the New Testament is corrupt and the gospel is not the New Testament. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not the New Testament. What gospel is the Quran talking about is the question. What is the Quran talking about? The Quran is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the actual text which was revealed upon Jesus Christ. Where is it? Is the question. All right. Let, I just want to jot these down because this is gold here, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. So Adnan said that the Quran does not say that the gospel has been corrupted. It says that the New Testament... <clears throat> has been corrupted. That's what the Quran says, according to Adnan. And then the question becomes, uh, uh, the well, he says that the Quran is affirming the text, the text of the gospel Beautiful. revealed to Jesus. To Jesus... Where uh, is it? Yeah, <laughs> is the question. That is a good question. If you're a Muslim, yes. if you're if you're a Christian, it's it's a it's a horrible question because we know where the gospel is. If you're a Muslim, that becomes a really really good question, and it becomes one of the many 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 downfalls of your religion. All right, so Sam, I detected yes. uh, several issues there in that first yes. little clip. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one. He says that the Quran does not say that the gospel has that the gospel that the gospel has been corrupted. I agree with that. What do, what do you think? Amen. One hundred percent. And he, it's sad that they don't see how this destroys the prophet of Muhammad and the Quran and proves that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the risen Lord of glory. And we'll unpack that. So it's mm -hmm. but guys, I, if I were you, I would download 
Adnan Rashid's video before he removes it out of shame and embarrassment <laughs> because he admit, guys, hear it. The Quran does not teach the gospel's corrupt. In other words, the Quran agrees the gospel remains uncorrupt. <clears throat> it remains in a pure form. It's been preserved. And we're going to show how that now destroys the claims of Muhammad in a minute. Yep, we'll see that. Muhammad is in a world of hurt. He is yep. in a world of hurt now based on what Adnan Rashid just admitted. So notice my, my initial challenge. Give me one unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran saying that the gospel has been corrupted. Adnan just said it. The Quran, not, not only does he not say, I mean, he doesn't, he, he's not even saying, hey, yeah, there's no unequivocal verse, but there are, the, there are these ones that will interpret that way. He specifically says the Quran does not say that the gospel has been corrupted. Doesn't say. Yeah. Does not say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, <sighs> Sam, Adnan yes. then goes on to say, it says that the New Testament yes. has been corrupted. Um, yes, I'm noticing he didn't give chapter and verse. You That's know, exactly right. You, yeah. know the, you know the Quran uh, better than just about anyone. What verse can you think of in the Quran that talks about the New Testament being corrupted? I'm not aware of any, any uh, passage that even mentions New, in fact, New Testament. Ednan knows more about the Christian scriptures than the author of the Quran. Guys, I want you to understand the embarrassment here and i feel bad for adnan because he's fighting a losing battle and this islamic ship is sinking badly even worse than the titanic so by the grace of the lord jesus christ the lord is allowing even muslims to admit what we have been saying over the years whoever produced the quran cannot be an omniscient deity mm -hmm. because an omniscient deity would know what to say and how to say it and not come out saying something that muslims say he meant the opposite mm -hmm. of what the plain reading of the quran is number one folks challenge adnan if you want to go to his comment section and again i challenge him to debate me and david wood is gracious enough to host it on his channel and he's the most fair moderator in fact He's more fair to the opposing side than his own side to come out looking fair and unbiased. I would love to debate Adnan, does the Quran teach that the New Testament's corrupt? Because the author of the Quran did not even know about the New Testament, never mentions it. So how can the Quran claim <clears throat> something is corrupt that the author of the Quran is ignorant of? Where does the Quran say the New, because he said it, right? The New Testament is corrupted, meaning I should be able to find in the clear Quran, because the Quran repeatedly says it is in clear Arabic, it details all of its verses so that people can understand, it provides a detailed explanation of all its verses, leaving no room for interpretation. That's the repeated message of the Quran, and I can give you verses, and Lord willing, we'll delve into it, because this is a short clip. But for now, I want Adnan, challenge him, show us the verse that says, New Testament corrupted. You won't find it, it's not there, because he knows more about the Christian scriptures than the author of the Quran obviously knew. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. no, it's not there. And so what we would say, Sam, is the Quran, and we're, we're, we're going to get more into the gospel and what this yes. could mean, and how we can reconcile what the Quran says with anything remotely resembling reality. But uh, so now the, the, the challenge becomes, show us. He, he just said, the Quran says New Testament has been corrupted. So obviously, obviously, Adnan is thinking about some sort of chapter and verse which says the New Testament has been corrupted. Now, uh, if, if Adnan wants to say that, then he basically has to say that the Quran's been corrupted because he's got some Quran with some extra verses in it that we're not aware of because the Quran we have today does not say that, does not say anything remotely resembling that. Is that correct? 100%. That's why I'm saying, wow, Adnan, do you not realize what you're doing? <laughs> you're supposed to defend your religion and defend the claims of the Quran and defend your prophet, but you're actually, it's almost as if we're paying him behind the scenes to pretend to be a Muslim in order to help us destroy the claims of Muhammad and expose the Quran as a satanic fraud. Mm -hmm. He's actually helping us. Mm -hmm. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the enemies of the gospel are being used by Jesus to confirm the truth of the gospel. That tells you how powerful King Jesus is. He is risen. He's alive, whereas Muhammad is dead. Glory to the Lord Jesus. All right. Um, and uh, by the way, uh, everyone, I've said this before, uh, and I'm saying it again now. Um, we have a lot of people already in uh, who are watching right now. Anyone who wants to download this video 
and cut out parts of it to make individual videos and post those on your channel, you have our permission to do so. So if uh, we respond to a particular claim or something like that, and you think, oh, that would be good as a video, because keep in mind, if we have like an hour and a half, two hour live stream, lots of people aren't gonna watch a two hour live stream, but they might watch a five or six minute video where we address one point. So uh, if you wanna have that that one video, you are welcome to yeah. welcome to do that. Yeah, but here's what's astonishing, David. Even with a four hour video, you got over 32,000 views, man. How do you do it? Yeah, wow. When That's people amazing. hear wow. that the when people hear that the sizzle and the dizzle got something man. going down, they man, just can't they Ooh. can't stay away, man. Yeah, man. I mean, thirty. I'm like four hours. But man, uh, I won't even listen to ten minutes. But we're, that's just we're, me. We're just getting started, Sam, because they took the bait. <laughs> yeah, they did. Right. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, they right. fell for the snare to glorify Christ. They, supposed, Thank they, you, Lord. They fell the for it. Glory. Hallelujah. They fell for it, ladies and gentlemen. We've known for years. We've known for years that the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the gospel. And then it and that when it's referring to the gospel, it's referring to the gospel that Christians have in our possession. The gospel that we actually have with us, the gospel that we read, and therefore it's confirming our scriptures. But we also know, like Adnan, that the gospel contradicts the Quran on fundamental doctrines and therefore that Islam self-destructs. But your average Muslim, almost any Muslim will say, oh no, the Quran is filled with claims that the gospel has been corrupted. And so a question is, how can we get these guys to admit that the gospel hasn't been corrupted? Well, Adnan just admitted it. Adnan just said it. The gospel has not been corrupted, right? Why? Because he knows that. He knows that. But now he wants to say, oh, but the New Testament has been corrupted, even though there's no verse in the in the Quran that says anything will remotely resembling the New Testament has been corrupted. So now he has to admit the truth, but then make up something in order to try and uh, help people avoid the obvious conclusion. And Sam, by the way, Sam, this this is this is just, this is amazing, right? Because like 98% of the Muslims who are responding, well, oh yes, it does talk about the corruption of the gospel. And now you got to, okay, so it doesn't, uh, you're, you're right. The, it doesn't talk about the corruption of the gospel, but, and then he, he has to take things in a different direction, but that's progress, Sam. That's progress. They're admitting it. Amen. They're coming slowly to our position. Hopefully they'll get saved and trust Jesus, our Lord, for their salvation. All right. Now, God. now, Adnan says that what the Quran is affirming is the text of the gospel revealed to Jesus. He refers <laughs> to the text of the gospel yeah. that was revealed to Jesus. Yes. What do you think about that? Well, well, two problems. Number one, he assumes that Jesus went around with an actual book in his hand, an actual text that he read from. Mm -hmm. That's an assumption. So my challenge again, folks, take our our responses and challenge Adnan and other Muslims to prove their assertion. Because he said that the Quran says the text of the gospel given to Jesus. Unless Adnan believes that a book actually was sent down to Jesus and Jesus carried it, we obviously know just on historical grounds and even without appeal to the New Testament. <clears throat> my question would be to Adnan, can you show us historically that Jesus went around with a text in his hand that he preached from? Or do you not agree, which he has to, that Jesus preached the gospel orally and that Jesus was the gospel? Let me emphasize that. Jesus didn't simply preach the gospel. He is the good news in the flesh. And if you go and read the gospels and see what Jesus says, it's all pointing to him, his union with the Father, and how you need him for salvation. So Jesus preached the gospel, and he is the gospel in the flesh. That's number one. Number two, even taking for granted that Jesus was given an actual text. How many times have you heard David Wood in the two previous sessions, let alone all the sessions that he's done on this topic, quote chapter 7, verse 157 of the Quran, and quote chapter 5, verses 46 to 47. Chapter 5, verses 46 to 47, in chapter 7, verse 157 of the Quran says, The gospel given to Jesus is the gospel that the Christians at Muhammad's time had to judge by. And in 7, 157, we're told there's a supposed prophecy of Muhammad, who's supposedly the Ummi prophet, the unlettered prophet, in the Torah and the gospel with them at the time of Muhammad. So the Quran says whatever gospel Jesus had, the Christians at Muhammad's time had it, were reading it, and had to judge by it. I mean, how many times mm -hmm. must we repeat that same point over and over and over again? Now, if you want to go into those verses and elaborate, 5, 46, 47, and 7, 157. I have them. Yeah, but it, yeah, yeah one second. Let's pull, up, let's pull up a Muslim comment who's uh, basically saying the same thing that Anand is saying. And by the way, guys, once you realize 
once you realize how horrible this Muslim response is, keep in mind, this is the best they've got. This is the That's best right. they've got. So Johnny Two Shoes here says, God gave Jesus the Injil, the Injil. Men came after Jesus and wrote about Jesus, and you find those writing in the New Testament. So how can the Injil given to Jesus be the same as what you find uh, in the New Testament. All right, now, Sam, before you read those Quran verses, I want to read, so we basically want to show that both Allah and Muhammad affirmed that Christians in the seventh century still had the gospel, still had the Injil. So whatever we're talking about with the Injil here, it still existed in the seventh century, according to both Allah and Muhammad. So this is Jamiat Termini 2653. Muhammad's companion, Abu Darda says, We were with the Prophet when he raised his sight to the sky. Then he said, This is the time when knowledge is to be taken from the people until what remains of it shall not amount to anything. So this is Muhammad talking about Muslims and saying knowledge is going to be taken away from Muslims. Oh, that sounds sad because here we are 14 centuries later and our Muslim friends think that they've got the knowledge when Muhammad says it's been taken away. So Ziyad bin Labid al-Ansari said, How will it be taken from us while we recite the Quran? By Allah, we recite it, and our women and children recite it. Muhammad replies, May you be bereaved of your mother, <laughs> oh Ziyad. Right? Think about this, right? <laughs> Ziyad, <laughs> Ziyad's trying to defend Islam, right? He's saying, Muhammad, how can knowledge depart from us when we have the Quran, buddy? We've got the Quran. Muhammad's repl Muhammad replies, may, may you be bereaved of your mother, O Ziyad. I used to consider you among the Fuqaha, the Islamic jurists of the people of Al Medina, but now I realize you're a moron, is basically what he's saying. <laughs> now, notice what Muhammad replies The Torah and the Gospel are with the Jews and the Christians, but what do they avail of them? So, notice, Sam. This assumes a reliable, uncorrupt copy of the Torah and a reliable, uncorrupt copy of the gospel because Muhammad is using this as a response to Ziyad saying, how can knowledge depart from us when we have the Quran? So we have the word of God. How can knowledge depart from us? And Muhammad's response is, what are you talking about? Jews and Christians have the Torah and the gospel, don't they? Yes. Right? So he's 100%. responding, look, we all agree that the Jews and Christians are, are getting things wrong, right? But we, 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 we agree that they still have their reliable scriptures, and so their, their knowledge is, is corrupt, even though they still have the scriptures. That's what I'm saying is about to happen to Muslims, that even though we have reliable scriptures, knowledge is going to depart from us. So yeah. according yeah. to Muhammad, notice what, he, notice what he says. Direct quote from Prophet Muhammad. The Torah and the gospel are with the Jews and the Christians, but what do they avail of them? In other words, Jews and Christians aren't paying real attention to their scriptures. So my question for Don, Johnny Two Shoes, you said God gave us the, God gave Jesus the Injil. Well, your prophet, your prophet Muhammad said in the seventh century that Christians still had the gospel. So is it your position? that Muhammad is talking about the gospel that was given to Jesus and that Muhammad is claiming that this gospel which God gave to Jesus was preserved all the way to the seventh century in Arabia. So you're, you're telling me that the gospel of Jesus, the one that Jesus had, the book that Jesus had was preserved from the first century to the second century to the third century to the fourth century to the 5th century, to the 6th century, and into the 7th century, Muhammad's still saying that Injil that, that God gave to Jesus, these Christians still have it. So you're telling us that for those, uh, all the way down to the 7th century, Christians still had the inspired, preserved, authorita authoritative, uncorrupt gospel of Jesus. That's what you're telling us, right? Because Muhammad says he has it. You're saying it was revealed to Jesus, but Muhammad says whatever text he's talking about, they still have in the 7th century. So Sam, you can go and give us give us yeah. those verses. I'll be waiting to uh, yes. Johnny me, Two Shoes. Let me show how this actually would either <clears throat> prove too much, right? Or they're fighting a losing battle. Let me add what you just said. Mm -hmm. If the point is that that hadith 
does not mean what it says, that the Torah and Gospel will remain uncorrupt, then the implication is that the Quran will be corrupted too. In other words, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If Muhammad is saying that Muslims will be ignorant of knowledge, even though they have an uncorrupt Quran, just like the Jews and Christians are ignorant, though they have an uncorrupt Torah and Gospel, and they still say, well, it doesn't mean that the Torah and Gospel are corrupt, then are you now ready to deal with the consequence? Because Muhammad is saying the Muslims are going to follow after the pattern of the Jews and Christians. So if you're saying that the Jews and Christians are ignorant because the Torah and the Gospel are corrupted, then that means the Quran must be corrupted, explaining why the Muslims will also be ignorant of knowledge. So you either are going to have to admit none of these books are corrupt, or all of them are corrupt, not just the Torah and the Gospel, because the Hadith is plain as day. And David would already elaborate it, so I won't add to that, but what I want to do is, I'm going to quote chapter 5 of the Quran, by the way. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, Sam. Yes. Uh, I want uh, I want uh, Johnny Two Shoes to give a reference here, because he didn't quote the whole passage for us. Johnny Two Shoes said, "And Allah has told you that the people of the Scripture, Jews and Christians, changed their Scripture and distorted it, and wrote the Scripture with their own hands." Bukhari, because we're yes. going to be looking at this stuff. Go ahead and give us the full quotation. Give us the reference, Johnny Two Shoes. Yeah. I know what he's referring to, but Bukhari is going to be a nightmare for him oh, because yeah. Bukhari is <laughs> going to embarrass him. We'll get to Bukhari. Now, notice what they did, folks. We want to stick to the Quran, but glory to Jesus Christ, they went outside of the Quran because that means now I can go outside of the Quran. Folks, mm -hmm. notice what he just did. We said, where does the Quran say it? So he runs to the Hadith. Fine, we're going to run to the Hadith. And the only reason why David Wood quoted the Hadith here. He quoted it to show that these Muslims are stuck. If you're Sunni Muslims, you're stuck with the Hadith. And since now you want to appeal to the Hadith, we're going to appeal to the Hadith. But the challenge is clear. Let me repeat the challenge. Where does the Quran say our scriptures are corrupted, that they no longer remain in pure, pristine form? So now Sunni Muslims don't go with the Quran alone. So he gave them a Hadith, and that wasn't good enough. He, he's meeting you at your level. He's quoting your Hadith. That wasn't good enough. And now you want to misquote Bukhari, his citation of Ibn Abbas. We'll get to that. And we're going to show you what it means yeah. and doesn't mean in context. And that won't be good enough. So nothing's going to be good enough. The Quran's not good enough. The Hadith's not good enough. Now with that said, chapter 5, verses 46, 47, trusting the Lord Jesus to anoint us to speak clearly. Because Muslims, we, we want you to get it in the power of the Holy Spirit. We want you to see it and get saved and leave Muhammad. Because he can't save anyone. He couldn't even save himself. I'm going to read a translation by a Muslim. It's, it's the Ahmed Samira translation, and it's in my articles, and God willing, after the session, I'll put links to these articles in the description box because this article specifically deals with the issue. Does the Quran confirm the Old and New Testaments? Because I've heard this argument, and I've addressed it thoroughly. Here's a translation done by Muslims, and I'll bring out why they translated the Arabic in this manner. Ahmed Samira, chapter 5, verses 46, 47, folks. Notice... This is Muslim team, a duo. I think it's a father and daughter team. Notice how they translate the word Torah and gospel. And we sent after, following on their tracks with Jesus, Mary's son, confirming what is between his hands. Literal translation of the Arabic. Literal translation. Musaddiqan, sadaqa. Musaddiqan, bayna yadehi, between his hands. Literal translation. It literally says, that which he had access to, that which he touched, that was between his hands. An Arabic idiom, meaning whatever he had access to at that time, he could pick up and look at and read. That's what he's confirming. Now notice the translation. Confirming what is between his hands from the Torah slash Old Testament. They translated the word Torah as Old Testament. And we gave him the New Testament slash Bible. That's how they translated the word Injil. Muslims, listen to what I'm saying. And Christians, you need to get this. A Muslim team realized historically that if the Quran is referring to the gospel in the possession of the Christians at Muhammad's time, historically, that has to be a reference to the New Testament, the Bible they had. And they translated it accordingly. Let me repeat. We gave him the New Testament slash Bible in it is guidance and light, confirming what is between his hands from the Torah slash Old Testament, and guidance and sermon, advice, warning to the fearing and obeying. Uh, obeying. And now notice chapter 5, verse 47. And the New Testaments, Bibles, people, wow, they translated the word Ahl al-Injil, the people of Injil, 
as the people of the New Testament, the people of the Bible, should judge, rule with what God descended in it. And who does not judge slash rule with what God descended, so those they are the debauchers. Now notice how they render chapter 7, verse 157. Same team, Ahmed Samira, same team. Well, this one actually, surprisingly, I have one from Muhammad Assad, but I'll ignore him. Ahmed Samira. Notice how Ahmed Samira translates this, because even Assad is good, but we'll get to Assad in a minute, Lord willing. Ahmed Samira, 7157. Those who follow the messenger, the prophet, the illiterate, belonging to a nation, whom they find written at them in the Torah slash Old Testament, translation provided by them, and the New Testament slash Bible. Now, David, help me understand this. Mm -hmm. Why would a Muslim couple look at the Arabic word Torah and the Arabic word Injil and translate the word Torah as Old Testament and translate Injil as New Testament slash Bible if they're not aware that in its historical context, these terms can only refer to the Old and New Testaments respectively and to nothing else? Um. I think I think they just understand that that's the only way to reconcile anything that Quran is talking about with uh, with anything that we know from history or uh, basically any sort of reality in general, right? Hundred percent. So these Muslims who are honest to the historical context of the Quran are doing the work for us. Christians, let it sink in, and I'll give you the links to the articles because I want you to use these citations, these quotations to glorify Jesus. Until every Muslim knee bows and every Muslim tongue confesses Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is a false prophet. Muslims who are honest to the historical context of the Quran can't get away from the fact that in its historical context, the term gospel could only mean to the Christians hearing it, our New Testament. And again, we need to educate our Christian brothers and sisters as well, because most often even Christians think gospel means only the four gospels. In point of fact, if you understand the message of the New Testament, the gospel is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not simply what he spoke, but it is the revelation of Jesus Christ's life, teaching, and the revelation he sent to his apostles after his ascension by the Spirit. In other words, the entire New Testament is the good news that Jesus Christ revealed while he was on earth, and by his spirit, which he sent to his inspired emissary. So Christians need to think in a more broader context. Gospel is not just the four gospels. It's not just what Jesus preached on earth or how he lived and the miracles he did. All of the New Testament, the entire revelation of the New Testament is the good news that Jesus revealed either in person on earth or by his spirit from heaven to the inspired authors of the New Testament. In other words, the Muslims even see the entire New Testament is the revelation of Jesus Christ, what we call the good news. Um, yeah, I had a quick question for a uh, quick question for Johnny here. Uh, Johnny, you said uh, my reference is incorrect. Are you are you talking to me? You said my reference. You said your reference is incorrect. Are you talking to me there? J just just say yes or no. I quoted a passage. I quoted Jami at Termini. Um, are you saying my reference is incorrect? Just want to clarify that in case anyone wants to look it up. Yeah. And we have all the documentation. Thank God for modern technology, for internet, because all of these resources, which we had to buy hard copies of, are now available online for free by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to be used for his glory. Right? Um, he said, Jami at Termini, Book 26, Hadith 53. So your reference is wrong. Johnny, you talking to me? I have no idea. I hear him saying, sorry, I meant assuming. But now he says, I'm assuming. Is he talking to you? I have no idea. Oh, okay. So he's assuming my reference is wrong. Just just to be clear, everyone. Uh, okay. Talking to me? And now I, I, it's kind of sad that we have to go through this stuff. But um, all right. So let me go ahead and click on here. And screen share. What, 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 do, you, what do you think we're reading over here, Johnny? What do you think we're reading when we talk about this stuff? And that's 2653, Jamiat Turbidi, narrated yeah. Abu Ad Darda. What's that? We have the whole thing. Look right there. Yeah, By Allah, we recite it and our women and children recite it. He said, may you be bereaved of your mother, O Ziyad. Nice and we go down buddy. and we have the Torah and the Injil are with the Jews and the Christians, but what do they avail of them? Jews and Christians have the Torah 
and the Injil. This is in the seventh century. So it was actually a simple question. By the way, we wanted the we wanted the reference to Bukhari because I think you left a little something out. And we'd yeah. like to we'd like to put the we'd like to put that up on the screen just to make sure yeah. you weren't uh, you weren't uh, pulling a fast one on everyone. Uh, Johnny Two Johnny Two Shoes. <clears throat> I like that's the name too, Johnny Two Shoes. <laughs> John John Beavers. Oh uh, man. Okay. No. Uh, oh no no no. He he said it. Johnny Two Shoes said I'm on I'm on slow mode. Yes, your reference is incorrect, guys. <laughs> guys, I'm literally putting the <laughs> Sam. This is funny. Yeah. Uh, the, it's actually up on the screen here, 2653, and there it is, English and Arabic, and he's literally telling me my reference is wrong. So this is the actual, this is the actual text from Jamia Termini on the screen. Yeah. You see the number. All right, dude, Johnny Two Shoes, you better uh, apologize right now. We don't have time for this, man. We don't. We really, really, yeah. we're trying to go through sources. If if anything we say are going to say, nope, you're wrong because you don't know how the numbering system works or you can't look passages up. Um, we we do not have time for that. So if you're not being serious, dude, uh, you gotta you gotta go somewhere else. We're, we're we're trying to be nice. Now you mentioned Bukhari. Now first of all, first of all, Johnny, do you agree with what we've been saying? Right. I pointed out, my, uh, and by the way, my reason for go for citing this hadith is Muhammad is supposedly receiving revelations from Allah. Allah keeps talking about Jews and Christians having the Torah and the gospel. And then Muslims say it's been corrupted. And you're saying you, you guys tell us that we're misinterpreting these passages. We're misinterpreting these passages. Well, if we're misinterpreting these passages, my point is your God misinterpreted the passages in the same way we are right so yeah. so so your prophet your prophet thinks that your god is revealing to him that jews have the torah and christians have the gospel he thinks that we still have them so if if you want to say that that we're misinterpreting these passages of the quran guess what your prophet misinterpreted them in the exact same way we are and you guys apparently know more not only than allah but also than your than your prophet. So what do you do when um, chapter 5, verse 47 commands us to judge by the gospel? That assumes that we have the gospel. Your prophet takes these revelations from Allah and insists that we have the gospel. So the question, maybe he's already maybe he's already replied. Go ahead and repeat it for me. Or if you guys see a response from him. Do you agree that Christians in the seventh century still had the inspired, preserved, authoritative gospel that Allah and Muhammad are referring to. By the way, David, I sent you two links to the online version of Tirmidhi, two versions of the Hadith, the one you quoted, another version mm -hmm. from Tirmidhi. It's right there. I sent it to you because I can't post the links on your comment section. Mm -hmm. So folks, even on sunnah.com, S-U-N-N-A-H.com, what he read, I gave him the link to, and I gave him a link to another version of the same Hadith, two of them where it says the same thing about the Torah and Geo, and you'll see the grading of one of them is Sahih, mm -hmm. sound. It gives you the grading. So he's got the link. So Lord willing, if he wants to post them for you, he can. I can't. They won't let me do that. Okay. So now until we're waiting for him, uh, I don't know, if, because I wanted to even read something interesting from Muhammad Assad's <clears throat> confirmation of the expression, what they call Baina Yadehi or Baina Yadeya, between his hands and or between your hands, right? Oh. An honest admission, but go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'm saying that's a, there are multiple clips from Adnan where all of that is going to be extremely relevant. Okay, good, good, yeah. good, good. We have it. Follow um, my just, art, so just wanted ahead. to figure out what Johnny Two Shoes is saying here. He's saying, answer my question. The Hadiths in Bukhari, which says they changed their scripture and distorted it. Johnny, we want you to quote the actual Hadith. So we can deal with it. Or give the reference. Because we're convinced that you're leaving a little something out. Now, what, notice when you quoted it before, you said Allah says. So you said Allah, Allah says, but you're leaving some stuff out. So give us the reference that you're looking at. Because keep in mind, I don't know what what edition you're using, because apparently you don't know how different uh, different editions and translations of the works uh, works turn yeah. out and can give different references. You want to just pull up the passage for him, Sam? Yeah, I I know what he's referring to. It's I know what he's referring to. Yeah. Yeah. There's a hadith attributed to Ibn Abbas where he yeah, yeah, basically yeah. That, says... And that's the key. And that's the key. That's yeah. what that's what he's not saying. And that's what I wanted him to say. 
Yeah. So should we just wait for him? Or because I, I have, because I wrote a lengthy rebuttal to even a Muslim trying to misuse this to show that Ibn Abbas taught the scriptures are corrupt when it's mm -hmm. actually a gross misreading mm -hmm. of what Ibn Abbas meant. If you believe, now here's the question, Muslims. If you believe Bukhari is consistent with himself and Ibn Abbas is consistent with himself, then there's only one plausible interpretation of this hadith that you always try to shove down our throats. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the Bible has been corrupted. It simply means that they have produced some other book not related to the Bible and they've misinterpreted it with their tongues because the same Bukhari attributes a saying to Ibn Abbas where Ibn Abbas says none of the books of Allah can be corrupted and therefore they remain intact. And I have it right in front mm -hmm. of me. Here it is. Yeah. The title of my article too, David. Yeah, yeah Sam, Sam, Ibn Sam. Abbas. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. I, 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 yeah, I want you to go through this. I want, I want our friends here to absorb the points here. Now notice, David Wood... And Sam Shamoon, we cited Allah and Muhammad. That's who we quoted. That's who we quoted from the Quran and from the Hadith. So we have the Quran, Allah saying that Jews still have the Torah, Christians still have the gospel. And then we quote Muhammad to show that if you want to say we're misinterpreting this, well, your, your prophet misinterpreted it in the same way we are. And so... We, your your prophet's agreeing with our interpretation, not your interpretation. He thinks your interpretation is garbage, right? Yep. And then in response to me quoting a hadith, our good friend Johnny Two Shoes says, ah, but why didn't you quote this hadith, which says this? And I wanted him, I wanted him to give the full quotation because he's talking about Ibn Abbas. Notice, as if... Muhammad and Allah say something clearly, and Ibn Abbas could even potentially overrule yeah. overrule Allah and Muhammad, clearly stating that we still have the gospel, right? As if that were even a possibility. But if you're like modern Muslims, basically anything any later Muslim said is more authoritative than Allah and Muhammad. They throw out what Allah and Muhammad said left and right, right? To go with what their what their current leaders say. But what we but but and now what Sam is pointing out is even if we even if we were to grant that Ibn Abbas can overrule Allah and Muhammad, you got some problems. You got some problems. And the reason you got some problems is Ibn, Ibn we have quotations from Ibn Abbas saying that no one can change our scriptures. And so now you've now you apparently just have someone who's contradicting himself, or you need to reconcile this in some way. So Sam, go ahead and give them that. Yeah. Okay, now this narration that he's referring to, guys, the name of my article, I'll put this on in the description box. Let me again sound like a broken record. Everything David and I discuss, before there was YouTube, we wrote articles and rebuttals detailing all this information. Please go to the website, answeringmuslims.com, go to answeringislam.net, go to my blog, read these articles, download them, you have my permission, you can download them, upload them, whatever you, whatever term you use. Spread the information so that Muslims get saved and see the truth and fall in love with the true Jesus, the Lord of glory, the Son of God. Here's the name of the article. See, I already dealt with this years ago because Muslim polemicists brought it up. Did Ibn Abbas believe that the Holy Bible was corrupt? Now, this narration appears several times in the collection of Sa'id Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Several times. But here's the gist. Let me just give you just one because it appears more than once. Narrated uh, Ubaidullah bin Abdullah. Ubaidullah bin Abdullah. Now pay attention to the language because Ibn Abbas is echoing <clears throat> chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 79, and chapter 3, verse 78. Neither of which teaches that the Bible is corrupt, but it talks about something else. Okay. Abdullah bin Abbas said, Oh, the group of Muslims, how can you ask the people of the scriptures anything? While your book, which Allah has revealed to your prophet, contains the most recent news from Allah and is pure and not distorted. Allah has told you that the people's scriptures have changed some of Allah's books and distorted it and wrote something with their own hands and said this is from Allah, so as to have a minor gain for it. Won't the knowledge that has come to you stop you from asking them? No, by Allah, we have never seen a man from them asking you about that, meaning the, the Quran, which has been revealed to you. So he's a little salty, guys. They never come and ask us about the Quran. Why do you guys keep going and asking them when Allah said they distorted their books and they wrote something with their own hands? Now, on the surface level, David, surface level, which like Muslims like to do, they read everything on the surface. They read the Bible on the surface. They read the Quran on a surface level. On a surface level, if I just stop there, oh boy, 
Ibn Abbas believe the scriptures are corrupted. And even if he did, his opinion is not greater than Allah and his messenger, as David Woods stated. However, if you believe, now this is for the Muslims here, I could care less about Bukhari. Bukhari is not an authority for me. But if you believe Bukhari is consistent, doesn't contradict. And if you believe Ibn Abbas is consistent, doesn't contradict. Ibn Abbas cannot be saying that the scriptures of the Jews and Christians have been corrupted. They no longer remain in pure form. So distorting the books doesn't mean changing the text. Even though he mentions a book they wrote with their hands, that's a reference to chapter 2, verse 79. And God willing, we're going to unpack what that means and doesn't mean. But why am I saying, if you believe Bukhari doesn't contradict and Ibn Abbas is consistent, the same Bukhari, the same Bukhari, let me read this. In a subheading, <clears throat> writes the following about Ibn Abbas. And this is all in my article. The subheading is, the words of Allah Almighty, it is indeed a glorious Quran preserved on a tablet. And you can read this online for free. This is the Aisha Buli translation of Sahih al-Bukhari. But now let me read it. By the mount and an inscribed book. Katara said that mastur means written. Yasturin means they inscribe. And the Umm al-Kitab is the whole of the Quran and its source. He said, ma talfizzu, talfizzu means he does not say anything but what is written against him. Now, guys, note the citation. Ibn Abbas, Bukhari is quoting Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said, both good and evil are recorded. And yuharafunna, yuharafunna, that's the distorting, yuharafunna, means they remove. No one removes the words of one of the books of Allah Almighty, but they twist them by interpreting them improperly. Let me repeat what Bukhari said. No one removes the words of one of the books of Allah Almighty, but they twist them, interpreting them improperly. Oh, but it gets better. Who also cites Bukhari citing this? Ibn Kathir in his exposition of chapter 3, verse 78. That's the passage which says they twist the words with their tongues, not their pen. Ibn Kathir, commenting on that passage, cites this tradition from Bukhari, and he quotes another authority, Wahab bin Munabba, a Jew who converted to Islam in the lifetime of the companions of Muhammad. Let me read. Mujahid, al shabbi Al-Hassan. Imagine having sons with these names. Katada, Al-Rabbi bin Anas, said that who distort the book with their tongues means they alter Allah's words. Now watch again. Ibn Kathir, you dummy. Ibn Kathir. And by the way, for the record, Ibn Kathir did think the Bible's corrupt. So what's ironic? He quotes Bukhari, who cites the tradition, says no book of Allah can be corrupted. And yet Ibn Kathir believed the Bible's corrupt, showing he's just as inconsistent as Johnny Tushu's and Anan Rashid. Mm -hmm. Al-Bukhari reported that Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Abbas said, that the ayah means they alter and add, although none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books, they alter and distort their apparent meanings. <whistles> but now he quotes Wahab bin Munabba. Wahab bin Munabba is a Jew converted to Islam. He was a follower of the companions of Muhammad. I mean, in other words, he knew Ibn Abbas. Wahab bin Munabba said, the Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them, and no letter in them was removed. Ouch. I'll repeat it again. One more time. The Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them, and no letter in them was removed. However, the people misguide others by addition, false interpretation. That's how they add and take away. Mm -hmm. Relying on books they wrote themselves. That's what Ibn Abbas said. And what books? Like the Talmud. Remember, he's a Jew, David. Mm -hmm. As a Jew, they went with sources such as the Talmud or the Mishnah. Sources written by uninspired rabbis after the time of Christ, which is what the Quran would be referring to in its historical context. But then he goes on to say, as for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. Let me repeat. They are still preserved and cannot be changed. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded the statement. So what's going on here, David? You have Ibn Abbas saying, and Bukhari citing, that no one can change any words of Allah's books and Wahab bin Munabba agreeing, no one can corrupt the Torah and Jeel. They remain the same, uncorrupt. No word is removed from <clears throat> the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so you want to quote one narration attributed to Ibn Abbas. At best, Ibn Abbas contradicted himself. 
At mm -hmm. best, that's all you're proving. But if you want to be more of a harmonizer, a concordance approach, then to harmonize these statements, Ibn Abbas is simply stating the obvious. They misinterpret their scriptures, and they wrote another book claiming it's from God, so avoid them. That's all he's saying. No more, no less. And and by the way, Sam, that, that, would, that would be our, probably, I'm assuming you, this is your understanding, but that would be our interpretation of these Quran yes. passages, 100%. is that the Quran is saying, yep, you have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, but... You corrupt it with your interpretations. You corrupt it with your mouths. You walk around saying things that uh, that that it doesn't say, and that's what it means. Uh, that's what you. So, if you wanted to say that that Christians and Jews corrupted something, you'd say we've corrupted our interpretations or our understanding. Is that is that correct? Yeah, hundred percent. That's exact. That's all the Quran is saying. That's and now, it. Now, Sam, irony of ironies. Yeah. Since that's what the Quran is saying, and yet Muslims believe that the Quran is affirming the corruption of our scriptures, the textual, the textual corruption of our scriptures, isn't it ironic that Muslims have corrupted their understanding of their scriptures because they're saying things that Allah never actually says. I mean, Adnan starts off by saying, the, the, the Quran says that the Christians corrupted the New Testament. Show us one word. Show us one word about Christians corrupting the New Testament. Um, so he didn't notice he doesn't give a reference for that. The references that he does give are 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 we're gonna laugh those off and we're gonna laugh those off YouTube here uh, in a few minutes. But it's just amazing that all of this comes down to Muhammad and Allah are saying, you Jews, you Christians, you have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, but you're not paying attention to it. Yes, you have it. Yes, you have it, but knowledge has departed from you because you're not you're not acting on it, you're not taking it seriously enough, right? Yeah. And we're telling Muslims that's what their book says, but their 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 understanding of their own of their own sources has been so corrupted that they can't even get their minds around it. But if they want to say that corrupting it in your understanding means the the text has been corrupted, then great. We can only conclude that the text of the Quran has been corrupted 100%. because Muslims yep. can't get their minds around what Allah is saying. And uh, and but and by and by the way, notice everyone, notice um, Sam quoted Allah in the Quran. I quoted Muhammad in the Hadith. Um, Johnny, now, now to be fair, Sam, I don't know if you saw it, but he said he, when we were talking, he said fair point. So he's not, uh, he's not someone who just responds in, in anger. He's actually yeah. considering what But he what did bring saying. chapter two. He did bring up chapter two for 79. Oh, that's perfect because he's... Adnan's going to do the same thing. We'll hold off until we oh, get to Adnan, to... but that is, that is great. Um, <laughs> oh, but, uh, oh boy. but, but oh, notice, boy. right? That it's very easy to respond to us. Here's the verse that says the gospel's been corrupted. Anan has already admitted there is no such verse, and he wants to say that the Bi that the Quran talks about the corruption of the New Testament. Once again, what chapter, what verse? If Johnny's saying Surah two verse seventy nine, we're about to have a field day, and guess what? That's what that's what Anan quotes at the end of his video too. So they're all going two seventy nine. So this is actually going to be fun. All right, should we jump into some more video clips? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. A couple quick comments. Uh, this is a little side note here, Sam. So let's let's be quick with this one. Uh, Michael Darwin said. Uh, David, why is Jesus' name in the Quran Isa, but the Arabic version of uh, sure. of, of Joshua is Yusha? How does that work, Sam? I don't actually uh, know your interpretation. Yeah. I know there I know there are a few. There are a few. I think three or yeah. four interpretations that I know of. I kind of side with the idea that Muhammad didn't know what the name was, and he heard some people who uh, maybe in a derogatory fashion were referring to, yeah. to Jesus as Isa. Because that's the that's the Arabic name for Esau, and so they would use this as an insult. And so yes, there were people absolutely. who were insulting Jesus by calling him Esau, which means Esau, which is the enemy of the Jews. And so that was that's how that was my interpretation. What do you think? Yeah. Well, the thing is, we really don't know why Muhammad botched up so many names. Like, for example, he calls Christians Nasara. Why? We don't know. He calls like uh, Elijah Elias. Uh, so. The Quran itself is a mystery. The real miracle of the Quran is that people think it's a miracle. But with that said, just to confirm what David is saying, this is not simply a Christian argument. Notice what David said, because there is a view that Muhammad may have heard Jews in derogation of Jesus calling him Esau. Do you know who confirms that the Esau of the Quran corresponds to the Hebrew name Esau? The late Ahmadidat, guys, you can read a booklet that is still online. You can read it for free. Do Ahmadidat, Christ in Islam. He says that the Arabic Isa corresponds to the Hebrew name Isa, and he thinks that Jesus' name is Isa. And then just recently, not too long ago, I actually shared this. You can Google, not Google, YouTube, 
Yasser Qadi, Yasser Qadi, Christ in Islam. In his lecture, Yasser Qadi says, the reason why Jesus is called Isa is because his Hebrew name is Isa. So you got Muslims admitting this, and yet they don't understand that they're insulting the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. by calling him Isa, the rejected brother of Jacob, who desired the things of the world more than things of God. So the Muslims are agreeing with you, David. Mm -hmm. So what else do you want? Nothing, nothing, nothing beyond that. Okay, uh, just uh, just to verify here, as you pointed out, Johnny Two Shoes uh, did post, woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn. So if this is supposed to mean that the gospel, I mean that the New Testament has been corrupted, um, again, we're going to have fun with this in a little bit once we get to the same clip from Adnan. But that clip from Adnan is actually at the end. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and hold off with uh, with Johnny. Ready for some more clips, Sam? Yes, go ahead. All right. So now we go to. Gosh, we only watched one clip so far. All right. All right. We got to speed it up. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Is the Quran talking about the writings of Paul? Is the Quran talking about the writings of Jude, James, or the book of Acts, for example? Is the Quran talking about these books when the Quran uses the word gospel? Of course not. The Quran doesn't even address these writings because these writings, even the Christians believe, are not from Jesus Christ, let alone from God Almighty. So it is very, very clear that our interlocutors, in this case David Wood and Co., are being very, very disingenuous to the Christian community. They are not honest with you. They are not telling you the truth uh, about the fact of the matter. And they do not respect you, let alone love you. They do not have any respect for the Christians because they are deliberately lying to the Christian community. It is very unfortunate that so many thousands of Christians out there have to listen to these lies. <laughs> that that uh that that last part there is actually hilarious because uh Adnan's trying to do what I do right if you watch my videos I point out how uh these these Muslim apologists and speakers they're lying over and over and over again and I point out how they're trying to mislead you and deceive you Muslims right yeah. and so I point out I point that out and then Adnan says that we're doing it um but the problem is what he says that we said is is completely false right I, I yeah. didn't. I didn't say that the gospel refers to the book of James, the letters of Paul, um, and the book of Acts. I didn't say that. He says, "Aha! Is it talking about these books? No. These Christians are being disingenuous." I never said that. Here's what I would say, because you guys haven't. Heard, you pr probably haven't heard what I, my thoughts on this. Uh, my view is that the Quran must at least be affirming the fourfold gospel, right? The, which so the four gospels treated as a unit from the second century on were called the fourfold gospel, or simply the gospel, right? You had the meaning, and this is going to be important later, but you had the preaching of the gospel, right? The gospel is the good news. It's a spoken, it can be a spoken message. So you can say, hey, he came preaching the gospel or he had the gospel, right? You can have that. You can have that. You can have that as the gospel. But if you're talking about a text, a, a book that was called the gospel from the second century onward, that was the fourfold gospel or Matthew, Mark, Luke and John treated as a unit in it as a text, right? As a book, right? So I would say the Quran must at least be affirming that. If it isn't, then it is hopelessly unclear what it is talking about. That's my position. If you want to, yes. say, I mean, ju just m Muslims imagine if if that's what Christians, if Christians in the seventh century and in the sixth century, in the fifth century, in the fourth century, if you walked and you said the gospel and you're referring to a text. They all interpret that either as, they could interpret it as the entire New Testament, but they at least interpreted it as the collection of the four Gospels. So if you were going to Christians and you said, uh, believe the Gospel, judge by the Gospel, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the Gospel and you're referring to a text, which the Quran is referring to a text, that if Allah meant something else, then he is the worst communicator in all of history. That's my position. Right? Because yeah. notice, this would be like me coming up to you. Imagine I came up to you Muslims and I said, you Muslims, you need to believe in the Quran and believe it. You need to judge by it. You need to obey it. You have it. And so Muslims, whatever you do, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the Quran. So believe your Quran, judge by your Quran. Imagine me saying, to the, saying this to you, walking away. And then years later, my followers say, oh, when, when David said Quran, he actually meant a completely different book that they didn't have. Yeah. Wouldn't you think yeah, yeah. that I was the absolute uh, worst communicator in all of history if 
If when I say God, if I, when I say Quran to you, you think that I mean the Quran you have, and I'm actually talking about something else, isn't that something I should I should clarify if I want to be at all clear, right? Okay. Well, if you come to Christians and you're telling Christians to judge by the gospel, you have the gospel. You have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the gospel. And what Christians understand as the gospel is the fourfold gospel, the collection of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If if Allah meant something else. He is he 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 deserves our utmost condemnation for being the worst communicator in all of history. Hundred percent. No second grader could be that horribly unclear in what he's talking about and pass second grade. You couldn't do it. That is that is yeah. extremely sloppy. So here's what I would say: the Quran has to at least be referring to that. But Sam, we also know that Muslims, when or the early Muslim community, when they were asked, uh, "Hey, where's Muhammad mentioned in the Torah?" they would sometimes quote something like Isaiah. Right? Yes, they would. So they, so it was clear that in the Muslim community, there were people who interpreted Torah as not just these five books of Moses, but as a larger work, perhaps something yes, like sir. the New Testament. So following that, I think you could make a case that when it's saying gospel as a text, it's just referring to, and especially when it's referring to Christians as the people of the book and referring to the text, I think you could make the case that if Torah didn't just mean for the Muslim community, if Torah didn't just mean books of Moses and could mean later works that weren't revealed to Moses, then I think you can make the same case. However, yeah. um, I would not I would not be dogmatic on that. I would not say yes when when the Quran says uh, gospel, it's it's referring to the letters of Paul or the letters of uh, James. I would I would not make that claim. I'd say you could yeah. make you could make an argument, but I wouldn't be firm on it. So when Adnan is saying no, this is their position. This is why they're lying to you. Uh, straw man, massive yeah. massive straw man. But let me add to uh, Adnan's uh, dismay because, again, <clears throat> he's begging the question. Folks, here's what I want you to listen to carefully, what David has said and I said, because notice the circular reasoning. He again assumes that Muhammad is a true prophet and the Quran is the word of Allah, as opposed to assuming that the Quran is not from Allah and that Muhammad was ignorant of the contents of the scriptures or what the scriptures were in the possession of the Jews and Christians. So off the bat, this is circular reasoning. But beyond that, put that aside. Either he's ignorant or he's, again, being <clears throat> cunning, conniving, because the Quran itself affirms that Allah, again, I put in quotation marks, because I don't believe that Allah, the Quran is a true God, sent many messengers that are not mentioned by name. Let me give you the reference. Chapter 4, verses 163-164 of the Quran. Allah in the Quran, because he believes this word of Allah, so let's, for argument's sake, go with that. As a faithful Muslim... He cannot, well, again, he's going to appeal to the Hadith, so that's a different story because he's a Sunni Muslim. But since the challenge is to show us from the Quran, and we can go into the Hadith, and the Hadith won't help him. But again, let's first establish the Quran doesn't help him. It backfires against him, which is why he has to run to the Hadith. Nowhere in the Quran does it say there were no messengers sent after Jesus. Nowhere in the Quran does it say that Jesus' disciples did not function as messengers inspired by God to convey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's assuming this because he's reading later Islamic theology or later traditions into his reading of the Quran. But let me show you what the Quran does say, folks. Let me show you what the Quran does say. Chapter 4, verse 163 to 164. We have revealed to thee as we revealed to Noah and the prophets after him, and we revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, Jesus and Job, Jonah and Aaron, and Solomon. And we gave to David Psalms. Now notice 4164. And messengers we have already told thee of before, and messengers we have not told thee of. So the Quran even says, Allah sent more messengers that have been named in the Quran. Now here's where Adnan is stuck. He believes that a messenger, a rasul, is someone who's given scripture. Since there are many messengers unnamed, how does he know that those messengers do not include Peter, Paul, and James? And how does he know that what they wrote are not scriptures produced by wahi, revelation from Allah, when the Quran says there are many messengers we have sent that we haven't told you of, and according to a Sunni theology, a messenger is one who's given a scripture. That's part of his tradition. But it gets worse for Adnan. It gets even worse for Adnan. Chapter 5, verse 66 and 68, which David always quotes. Notice the language carefully. Chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. Had they performed the Torah and the gospel and what was sent down to them from the Lord? Folks, right there, end of story. And I saw Alan Ruhul mention 568. It says, had the Jews and Christians performed 
the Torah and the Gospel, and what was sent down to them. Uh, excuse me, Adnan. If this is now addressing the Christian and Jewish communities respectfully, respectively, and it's saying to them, now don't just follow the Torah and Gospel, but all that's revealed to you, you're telling me that a Christian is going to sit back and say, oh, but Peter's not revealed, John isn't revealed, Revelation is not revealed, Paul's letters are If we take this passage at face value, it's addri addressing a group at a specific time in history. It's historical context. Muhammad is addressing Jews and Christians. The Christians have the 27 books of the New Testament, and they believe all of it is revealed. So the passage should have said, had they performed the torn gospel only, only that, nothing else, everything else ignored. But no, it says, had they performed the torn the gospel, was sent down to them from their Lord, they would have eaten both what was above them and what was beneath their feet. Some of them are a just nation, but many of them evil are the things they do. Now notice 68. Say, O people of the book, Ahl al-Kidab, chapter 5 or 68. You do not stand on anything until you perform the Torah and the gospel. And what was sent down to you from your Lord? So the question is, Christians, the Quran is saying, hold fast to the Torah and gospel what was sent down to you. Was there anything else sent down to you? Yes. The books of the New Testament that the Holy Spirit inspired through the apostles and their companions, backed up by Jesus from heaven with signs and wonders. So if I follow this passage, Muhammad just told me, follow all of my New Testament, reject none of it. And there is no debate that in the seventh century, David, no debate historically that the Christians agreed as a whole that the 27 books of the New Testament are the words of God. I, he may refer to a fringe group, maybe the Syriac church, but the church as a whole, apart mm -hmm. from a fringe group here or there, accepted the 27 books of the New Testament, and even the Syriac church, meaning the church of my ancestors, accepted 22. So even if we go with their canon, it's more than the gospel at Nan. Why didn't you quote these passages? And let alone what the commentary said, David, we need to do a session on this. On chapter 36, verses 13 following, because according to the commentators, the three messengers who were sent to the city were Peter, John, and Paul, according mm -hmm. to the commentators. But I want to stick to the Quran. Mm -hmm. And we find uh, these references to uh, Paul speaking the truth on behalf of Jesus Christ all over the place in the Muslim sources, don't we? Yeah, I have an article on it yep. set up, Paul and the early Islamic sources. Yeah, and so uh, yep. it, it's very interesting that the 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 early the early Muslim community, when Allah says that He's going to protect the true followers of Jesus uh, until the day of resurrection, things like that, um, they're much more consistent than later Muslims who will conclude that uh, Allah just messed up and got everything wrong and helped the wrong people. Um, so they understood that there's no way, there's no way some random guy like the Apostle Paul is coming in there and, co and corrupting everything, all right? You, you couldn't overpower Allah like that. No. Um, awesome. you, 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 can't, you can't have Allah, this is what they understood, you can't have Allah uh, having Jesus born of a virgin, then living the most miraculous life in history, and then uh, him being the Messiah, and then him telling Jesus that uh, he's going to protect his followers until the day of resurrection. And then Allah is saying that he aided the true followers of Jesus until they permeated, until they permeated this, this Yusuf Ali's understanding of the Quran, that they permeated the Roman Empire and took over the Roman Empire. Um, the, early, the early Muslims understood, you can't say that when Allah says he's going to protect the true followers of Jesus until they, became, until they become uppermost over those who oppose Jesus, you can't just say some random guy named Paul came in and corrupted the entire thing. You can't do it, right? So they had to treat Paul like a, a true apostle, and that's what we find in the Muslim sources. Exactly. And as you pointed out, that's how they interpreted the Quran. They interpreted the Quran as affirming the apostle Paul. So... Yes. We can. So anyway, the point of all this, you can make a case uh, beyond the Gospels. But just to, just, to, just to be clear, when I'm saying the Gospel, I'm going with sort of the bare minimum here. The bare, you could go even barer minimum. You could say a, partic yeah. a particular Gospel or something like that. But knowing that Christians referred to the fourfold Gospel as a text and that the Quran is affirming a text and that Muhammad is referring to a text... Uh, if you want to say it means something other than that, then you are horrible communicators. And yeah. I mean, Allah is a horrible communicator. And you might as well say that when he's talking about the Quran, he's not talking about your book. He's, and he, you, know, you don't know what he's talking about. 
But David, even if we get, grant them that mm-hmm. that they're, it's referring to a specific gospel, they're gonna they're not gonna like what that gospel is said no. to be. No, we 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 could we can yeah. let them pick. Take your take yeah. take your pick. <laughs> and if we if we go with their oldest extent, Sira, which mm-hmm. was edited by Minasham, you know what gospel he said that was, right? John. And I have I have the citation there. So if you want to wait, we can read it later. But it's mm-hmm. up to you. We yeah, and, and, and another that quick. that's another that's another problem for uh for Adnan that that we're going to see. Um, so a little heads up here. Uh, Adnan is going to claim that the Quran is referring to the gospel of Jesus, not the New Testament. The New Testament's corrupt. Um, but notice, Allah is still claiming that we have the gospel in the 7th century. And yet, when we go to our earliest Muslim sources on what they are interpreting, Allah's Amin, as Muhammad being confirmed in the gospel, they don't say, oh, here it is. Here's this book of Jesus. They go to the gospel of John. Right. Exactly. So that, that shows that the, that shows that the early Muslim community they understood our four gospels uh, to be what the Quran is referring to here. So interesting how later Muslims and just, know so much more. Dave, let me let me just rein it in. We got Canadian Catholic who wants to convert people to the Roman Catholic Church as opposed to focusing on the topic. Canadian that- Catholic. Canadian Catholic, Canadian Catholic, do me a favor, brother. It's not here to proselytize fellow Christians to your church. Focus on reaching Muslims who need Jesus and need salvation and need to trust in the Son of God, not Muhammad. So stop making this a Roman Catholic versus other Christian yeah, uh, denominations. Yeah, Canadian Catholic, uh, Protestants welcome here, Catholics welcome here, Orthodox yes. welcome here, Hindus so welcome here, um, Atheists welcome here, Muslims welcome here. We do allow, I mean, we, we are okay with Muslims trying to proselytize and so on because that, that's, that's more of the context, but yeah, uh, stop doing that. Yeah. Um, this, this is not, this is not a, you need to stay somewhat on topic. Um, all right. So, all right. Should we go? Should we go on to our next clip? Yeah, I'm waiting, bro. Let's all right. Do it. Going more, more Adnan here. And here we go. The Quran, when it talks about the gospel, it is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where is it? Does it exist today? Does anyone have that gospel? Let me answer the question. Yes, we have remnants of that gospel in the four gospels written by allegedly Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, there are remnants and the Quran alludes to those remnants. The Quran points to those true passages that actually truly belonged to the gospel of Jesus Christ once upon a time. The Quran tells the Muslims to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which was originally revealed upon him. The Quran commands the Muslims to believe in the Torah, which was originally revealed upon Moses. Is the New Testament the Torah? Or is the Old Testament the Torah? No. (laughs) I'm going to let you finish listening to that, Sam. Tell us when you're done. Mm. Oh, my goodness. You got it now? Yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, come on. Well, he, he unbelievable how bad it is. Yeah, since it's, you uh, really, David, I'm, let me just say something. I'm really shocked because Adnan is viewed as one of their best debaters mm-hmm. and most knowledgeable. I'm honestly saying this not by way of attacking. Mm-hmm. I'm really disappointed at the level of argumentation. I really it's thought, bad. I mean, man, dude, guys, Muslims, I thank the Lord Jesus that I know the true God. If I was a Muslim and I was honest, and I heard this man talk like that, I would be shaking my boots. Is this your best? This is all you got to say, but anyway, let's deal with it. Go ahead. So <laughs> yeah. notice this is bad because Sam, you you haven't uh, you haven't um, seen the entire video. He's about to yeah. start blasting away at both the Torah to try and show that the Torah is not actually affirmed by the Quran. It's the original Torah, but what we have now is a corrupt version that that might have some remnants of truth oh, left boy. in it, but not. Uh, uh, it's not. It's not the actual Torah. And he's arguing the same thing about the gospel. So you had the Gospel of Jesus, which is some sort of book uh, by Jesus, and our four Gospels now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are that um, they contain some remnants of them. And of course, yes. how do Muslims <clears throat> distinguish the the true remnants from the false, uh, you know, the corruption and so on? It's because whatever agrees with Islam. <laughs> Whatever agrees with Islam, that's part of the true gospel of Jesus. Yeah. And all this stuff that, that totally refutes and contradicts Islam, well, that's the stuff uh, That's the stuff that was corrupted and, and so on. And, and by the way, um, those of you who are watching, do, do you see what, do you see 
the methodology that Adnan is using? Because we always want to ask, hey, how come you guys will go to uh, a so-called you know prophecy about Muhammad and say, oh, that that's reliable scripture? Uh, but then you'll turn right around and say, oh, this passage about Jesus dying for sins or something like that, that's a corruption. Well, Adnan's trying to say that this is what the Quran is claiming, right? That there are these kernels of truth in the gospel, and you can find them by just figuring out which agrees with Islam. But, uh, you know, all the other stuff that disagrees with Islam, the Quran is not affirming that. And I'll yeah. just say, and then Sam could take it, I will just say, if this is what Allah meant... I think he could have very clearly said that, right? I think he could 100%. have very clearly said, uh, when he tells Christians to judge by the gospel, he could have very clearly said, um, don't judge by the gospel because it's so corrupt. There are a few truths in there, but whatever you do, don't judge by it because it's going to lead you astray. He could have done that. If he didn't want them, if he didn't want Jews judge, judging by the Torah because the Torah has been corrupt, he could have said, yeah, there are a few kernels of truth there, but guys, you really, 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 really need Muhammad. You know what he actually says in Surah 5, verse 43? Jews came to Muhammad to judge a dispute. And Allah said, what do they need you for, Muhammad, when they've got the Torah? That only makes sense. That only makes sense if they still had an uncorrupt book. But Adnan is going to claim, as we'll see, that even the Torah has been corrupt. But we could put off the Torah for a little bit. Uh, Sam, uh, what do you think yes. about Adnan saying that yeah. what, the, what the Quran is actually doing is saying that, yes, there's a book revealed to Jesus... That's somehow not corrupt. No, no, notice, Sam. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just amazing. Definitely, he yeah. says, I think he's I think he's just flat out contradicting himself here, right? No, he is. He's yeah. saying, he started off by saying, the gospel has not been corrupted. There's nothing in the Quran that says the gospel has been corrupted. But it says, the Quran does say, even though he won't give a verse, the New Testament has been corrupted. But guess what? If if the four gospels contain kernels, contain kernels of truth, but a bunch of falsehood. That would mean the gospel's been corrupted, yes, right? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, how do you answer his own self-refutation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's either he doesn't get it, he doesn't understand how to make a logical argument, mm -hmm. or he's so desperate to dole meat to his fan base, to give his fan base the impression he's refuting us. But again, that may work for people who don't care about the truth. That may work for people who just want to blindly follow, as you say, the world's most obviously false prophet. <clears throat> Muhammad who's an antichrist because understand folks David Wood just brilliantly laid it out just understand what Adnan said and the implication of it the Quran never says the gospel is corrupt and the Quran was a text given to Jesus so okay my brain I'm again I'm not the sharpest tool in the, in the shed my brain thinks okay if the text of Jesus has never been corrupted it's been preserved then he says well, that gospel, only bits and pieces of it can be found in the four gospels, apart from all the embellishments and corruptions. But hold on. If the text of the gospel has never been corrupted, that means it must exist. But now you're saying it doesn't exist, only bits, bits and pieces exist, and exist sandwiched with all these corruptions and embellishments. So you end up actually saying the Quran does say the gospel is corrupted. I mean, am I missing something here? Because, you know, I'm not, like I said... I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he wants to speak out of both sides of his mouth because, yep. folks, it's obvious. He knows he lost this debate. He admits what David Wood stated, that the Quran nowhere comes out unequivocally saying the gospel's corrupt, even <clears throat> about the Torah. It never says it's corrupt. He admits all this, but then he says that, well, the Quran says it's the New Testament that's corrupt. And then I guess the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, is corrupt, even though there's nothing in the Quran that says it. Why? Because the underlying assumption is, if he admits the New Testament is that gospel, the Old Testament is that revelation, that Torah given to the children of Israel, he sees that the present Bible contradicts the Quran, proving Muhammad is a false prophet, so he doesn't want to go there. But isn't that exactly your point? Muhammad confirms the Bible, but then contradicts the Bible, therefore he's a false prophet. Mm -hmm. But he wants to say, since it contradicts Muhammad, you know, Muhammad contradicts the Bible, and yet the Quran says, whatever the Jews and Christians had, those are the uncorrupt revelations of God, and that's the Bible. But that can't be, he's a true prophet, ipso facto the Bible's corrupt. So he's begging the question... And that Muhammad can't be a false prophet, therefore your Bible has to be corrupt, even though I just admit, nowhere does the Quran say the gospel's corrupt or the Torah's corrupt. I admit that, doesn't say it, David is right, but it's got to be corrupted because it doesn't agree with the Quran, because Muhammad can't be a false prophet. Am I missing something here? 
Uh, s- someone's definitely missing something, but uh, I mean, gosh, j- ladies and gentlemen, j- just think about this. Anand starts off his video by agreeing that the gospel has not been corrupted. He then goes on to say that what the Quran means by gospel is this book of, of Jesus. Then he starts asking, but where's this book? Oh, where's this book? Oh, we need to ask where this book is. Obviously, he has no idea. So we can only conclude that it doesn't exist anymore or it's buried somewhere. In either case, we don't have it, right? Then he says that that what, what we actually have are a bunch of corruptions of the gospel. <laughs> and yet he, he wants to say that the gospel has not been corrupted. Guys, if you're saying that the, the four gospels are filled with complete nonsense and false teachings with some kernels of truth, and you're saying that the gospel hasn't been corrupted, I don't know what I don't know what you mean with words. I don't know I don't know what you mean by speaking, right? Sam, I would agree that there are true claims in the Quran. Would you agree? Hundred percent. We agree uh, that there are, that there are true claims in the Quran, right? Would we therefore tell people that Would we therefore affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Quran because we believe there are a few nuggets of truth in there? Absolutely not. In fact, you and I speak much better than the author of the Quran because we make it clear. The Quran is not the word of God. It's not revelation from God, but it does contain truth because you don't need to be inspired to speak the truth. All you need to do is ape what the Bible says. And if you agree with the Bible, that's true. And also, like events in Muhammad's life, why would I want to say that's false? So we're communicating much more clearly Then the author of the Quran is saying, the Quran is not the word of God, but it contains truth. Why couldn't Allah or his messenger, because the Hadith say that Muhammad was given the blessing of being the most eloquent in speech and pithy expressions that have, you know, very deep, profound meaning. Could Muhammad simply say, look, guys, your scriptures you've tampered with, they contain portions of the truth, but they're corrupted. It's not the gospel originally given to you. It's not the Torah originally given to you. Why can't Muhammad simply say what he means Mm -hmm. if that's what Muhammad meant? Why are they doing a better job than their prophet and their God and communicating what they believe Muhammad meant? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. And uh, notice, guys, uh, we want you Muslims to pay attention. Um, do you ever think that just because we believe in some things that are in the Quran, like the Quran says that Jesus performed miracles. Well, I agree that Jesus performed miracles. So I would say, okay, that is a true statement in an otherwise very, very messed up book, right? So we can agree that there are true statements in the Quran. We would never affirm the Quran as a book from God uh, just because of these things. But according to Muslims, guess what, Sam? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those were recognized as the Gospels from the first century all the way to the time of Muhammad, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so, so, if we want to say that there was some original book by Jesus and that it was, uh, you know, uh, a few nuggets from that book were kept by the Gospel writers, then by the seventh century, the Gospel was hopelessly corrupted into the, the fourfold Gospel, which... Uh, even according to Adnan, as we're going to see, is a really, really, really false book, according to Adnan. But he's saying, yes, there are remnants there. Well, by definition, that would be corruption. By definition, that would be massive corruption. But then you've got Allah affirming the book that the Christians have. Right? So let's just just one more time. We've been through this already. Just um, Surah 7, verse 157, those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written down with them in the Torah and the gospel, it is they who will prosper. Surah uh, 18, verse 27, and recite what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is none who can alter his words, and you shall not find any refuge beside him. You get to uh, Surah 5, verse 47, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. Just a few verses earlier, why do they come to you for judgment, Muhammad, when they have the Torah, <laughs> right? So Allah is affirming these books in the 7th century, which according to Adnan, the books that they actually have are corruptions and perversions of the truth. And Allah is saying, you judge by your book. You judge by your book. Muslims judge by their book. Jews judge by their book. Christians judge by their book. That's the message of Allah, right? And Notice, if if Anand is right, uh, once again, Allah is the worst communicator in all of history. He wants to say, so here again, uh, 
uh, apparently Allah's off his meds or something because what he wants to <laughs> what he wants yeah. to say is you Christians you know that book you got that you call the gospel there are a few nuggets of truth in there but overall that, don't judge by that that's really messed up instead instead he says that book you got good as gold judge yes, by it you have no other ground to stand upon if you do not stand upon that book that is a strange way of saying guys if i wanted to say if all i wanted to say was i agree that there are some true statements in the quran and what i actually said was uh the quran is the inspired preserved authoritative word of god you better judge by it you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the quran i think that if if I, if all i meant was Hey, there are a few nuggets of truth in there. I think you'd say, David, you are the worst communicator I've ever heard. Guess what? That's what Muslims, that's what Muslim apologists like Anand Rashid are telling us about his God. But guys, I could bring this up a million times. If I cannot trust Allah to be clear in what book he's telling me to read, why would I trust him on the way to heaven, right? You're telling me, you, by definition, you Muslims are telling me that your God and your prophet are the two worst communicators who have ever existed. They keep wanting to say one thing, but it comes out completely different. Well, why would I believe these guys on anything? How do I know when when it, when when Allah says something about Tawheed that is something uh, that I'm supposed to take seriously and not like not interpret it some completely different way because he doesn't know how to talk? Yeah. All right, those are my exactly. Ideas. Now, let me give two verses to confirm what you're saying, mm -hmm. that... The Quran not only confirms the Bible, but it claims to be a scripture that provides detailed explanation of everything so that it leaves nothing for interpretation. All you need to do is just read it carefully. Let me read chapter 12, verse 111. Folks, understand the implication. The Quran claims, or Muslims believe the Quran is the word of Allah. Allah is an omniscient being, a perfect communicator. Muhammad was blessed with eloquent speech. Now let's see what the eloquent, perfect Quran says. Its role is in relationship to the book that the Jews and Christians have and the kind of message it presents. Is it an incoherent, unambiguous, I mean, ambiguous, unclear message? Let's read. Okay, chapter 12, verse 111. There is in their stories instruction for men endued with understanding. It is not a tale invented, but a confirmation of what is before it. A detailed exposition of all things. So this Quran confirms what they have, the Jews and Christians. And by the way, why is this significant? Because chapter 12 is the story of Joseph, Surat al Yunus. It's recounting the story of Joseph from the Old Testament. So what is it saying in context? This Quran confirms what the Bible says about Joseph and provides a detailed exposition. But then in chapter 10, verse 37, <clears throat> I'm going to read Muhammad Sarwa's translation. A Muslim, not a Christian. Chapter 10, verse 37, this confirms the existing book, and he puts in parentheses, David, the Bible. This confirms the existing book, the Bible, and explains itself. Well, no, it doesn't, because according to Adnan, the Quran really meant to say it only confirms parts of those books, certain verses in those books, and it meant to say you can't trust all of it, because you can't find the entire uncorrupt Torah and gospel in those books. Mm -hmm. So again, either Allah failed and he's a terrible communicator, needed Adnan to help him out, or Adnan is grasping at straws. He sees how this destroys Muhammad's prophethood, and he needs to dole meat to his audience to save them from the implications of what the Quran says. Because if a Muslim's honest to the Quran, he has no choice but to leave Islam and come to Jesus and worship Jesus as his Lord and Savior. There's no way around it. Sam, can it's really kind of a sad situation that you've got Allah throughout the Quran bragging about being the clearest communicator of all. He's so clear. And think about it. I mean, according to Islam, Allah had all of eternity to get his book exactly the way he wanted. And then when he says things like, like uh, Christians have to judge by the gospel and Christians have no ground to stand upon unless they stand upon the gospel and no one can change his words. When he says things like that, Muslims have to rush to his rescue and say, oh, what Allah really meant when he said that no one can change his words is that no one can change his words in the Quran, but they can change his words in all the other scriptures. And what he really meant when he said uh, judge by the gospel is uh, don't judge by the gospel because it's been a corrupt, it, it's been corrupted, even though it has a few true statements in it. Um, and what he meant when he said, no ground, you have no ground to stand upon when, unless you stand upon the gospel and the Torah, what he really meant was don't stand upon those books. They've been corrupted. They've been changed. You can't trust anything. Just go to the Quran. That's really what he meant. 
they're telling, I mean, how sad is it? Allah is saying, I'm so clear. I'm so clear. You can't even imagine how clear I am. I'm just, I'm just spitting out all these clear truths. Oh man, they're blowing your mind away. And Muslims come along uh, off the top of our heads. We can say much clearer things than our God. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He, Allah, just go to your room, please. Because, uh, you know, the adults, <laughs> the adults are speaking here. Uh, you're a little too old. Um, you, no one can figure out what you meant, but we, we'll explain it. This is, just, this is the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life, Sam. Come on, David. Surprise. Surprise. All right, we ready to go on to another clip? Go ahead. All right, more from Adnan. I think where he's going now is he's just going to, which is funny. We're going to have a field day with this. He's going to he's going to say, uh, he's going to pick out all these things in both the gospel and the Torah, which he can't believe, uh, which he can't believe are, are, are part of the authentic gospel and the authentic Torah. Surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Here we go. All those oh, verses boy. describing the genocides and all the misdeeds of the prophets are not from the Torah. For example, we do not believe that Lot slept with his daughters. We do not believe that Judah had incest with his daughter-in-law. We do not believe that David was an immoral man. We do not believe that Moses would command the killing of innocent women and children. We do not believe that prophets like Samuel would do anything like that. For example, in the first book of Samuel, uh, chapter 15, verse 3, there is an indication of a genocide. There is a command to commit genocide. We do not believe these are parts of uh, God's revelation, let alone the Torah. So the Torah of Moses once upon a time existed, and the Quran confirms some of those parts in the Quranic text itself. All right, Sam, I'll let you finish listening to that clip. I heard enough. I know what he's going with this. Yeah, oh boy. Dude, no, no. honestly, Dave, I got to say it again. This, this is their best, really? This guy is, dis this guy is wreaking havoc on Allah and the Quran. Right? Wow. Sam. This is their best? Yeah. Yeah. Are you aware of anything, anywhere in the Quran? Yes. Or in any authentic hadith, which would even suggest that the book of Genesis is no longer reliable? Absolutely not. And guys, again, on my blog, I have articles where I document this. Just note this for, for reference sake. I want you to write down chapter 2 of the Quran, verses 246 to 252, and chapter 5 of the Quran, verses 20 to 26. Are you aware, folks, that the Quran confirms what he called genocide? The Quran confirms the Old Testament injunctions given to Moses and Joshua and David to smite, for example, the Canaanites, the Amalekites, even though the Quran is ignorant of the names of these peoples and claims that these were holy wars sanctioned by Allah himself. Let me repeat the verses again, David. That's why I'm saying, I, and I, I'm going to put it out there. I want three debates with Adnan. Number one. Uh, does the Quran teach Tawheed? Number two, does the Bible teach Trinity? Or if he wants, the deity of Christ? Number three, does the Quran confirm the Bible we possess today as the uncorrupt revelations of God? So I put it out there. David is willing to moderate all three debates. And he's super fair. In fact, he's unfair to me, but that's okay. I'm predestined to carry him till I die. But now, with that said, let's come back to the issue. Folks, <laughs> David, I'm about to cry from, I don't know, from laughter or from pain. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verses 246 to 252. Chapter 5, verses 20 to 26, confirms, don't take my word for it. Go and read the verses. David, I know you know this. Go read them. It recounts the Old Testament injunctions given to Moses, Joshua, David, to <clears throat> strike down, to smite the Canaanites, the Amalekites. Though it doesn't mention the groups by name because Muhammad didn't know. In fact, Muhammad was so confused, or the author of the Quran was so cute, uh, so confused. Did you know, David, that Saul's name is Talut? In order to make it rhyme with Goliath, Jalut, mm -hmm. Talut, and Jalut. And did you know in chapter 5, verses 20 to 26, it recounts Moses telling the Israelites, go and fight. And the Israelites say, no, you and your God go fight those giants. They're too big. And Allah condemning them. So if these Old Testament wars are genocide, you just buried Allah and Muhammad in the pit of hell because Muhammad said these were just wars sanctioned by Allah. And by the way, I don't grant his description of the Old Testament. And I don't grant his misinterpretation of chapter 31, verses 17, 18. So again, I'm just saying for argument's sake, the Quran not only does it reject Genesis, it confirms the stories found in the Pentateuch, as well as in the historical books about these holy expeditions 
ordered by, according to Muhammad, his own God. What is this guy talking about, David? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Sam, and, and so <laughs> it, it, notice we have the exact same problem. We have the exact same problem here, again, that we have with him rejecting the gospel, namely that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah that is in the possession of the Jews of Muhammad's time. Now, Sam, did the did the the Torah during the time during the seventh century did that include the Book of Genesis? Hmm, David. You know what? Oh, they just found a manuscript that the Torah at the time Muhammad only had the Book of Leviticus. Of yeah. course, it did. I mean, come on, historically, yeah. folks, yeah. who in their right mind is going to? Say? And by the way, David, let's mm -hmm. add another point. Another mm -hmm. point, real quickly. This is in the articles. Guys, write these passages down. Again, I'm not trying to sell our website. Because all these verses and the exposition are there free of charge. Use it for the glory of Jesus. Guys, write down chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 50. Write down chapter 3, verse 50. Write down chapter 5, verse 46, which David cited, mm -hmm. and chapter 61, verse 6. In those three passages, chapter 3, verse 50, chapter 5, verse 46, as you can see, I'm getting excited and animated. Chapter 61, verse 6, it says that Jesus was sent to confirm Musaddiqan, <clears throat> Lima Baina Yadehi al Torah. Mm -hmm. Confirmed the Torah between his hands. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the Quran says, said, That Torah Jews that I'm touching, that's the uncorrupt revelation of God. And even Ibn Kathir says as much in his exposition. But David, help me understand. Mm -hmm. The Torah at Jesus' time, did it not include the story of Lot? Uh -huh. Did it not include this command to wipe out the Canaanites? And mm -hmm. did it not include all these other injunctions that he just condemned? as mm -hmm. being genocidal or rape, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, yeah, so according to the Quran, Jesus confirmed the Torah that existed in his time, which Adnan just condemned. Uh, but then you have Allah in the seventh century confirming it. Again, chapter five, verse 43, some Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute. Allah responds to Jews coming to, no, notice Sam, if, if, the, if the Torah has been corrupted as Adnan claims, then the response of Allah, when Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute, the response should be, it's a good thing they're coming to you since their book has been corrupted with all this story about Lot and things like that, and Lot and Judah and all these things. It's all nonsense, right? That's not what Allah says. Allah says to Muhammad, why do they come to you for judgment, O Muhammad, when they have the Torah before them, wherein is the judgment of Allah? So, what... It, that's Allah saying, no, I'm confirming that Torah. And as if as if this were not clear enough, and soon in Abu Dawud 44, 49, Muhammad is judging a dispute. This is the historical background. Watch what happens. They set out a cushion for the messenger of Allah, and he sat on it. So this is the Jews setting out a cushion for Muhammad to sit on because that's the judgment cushion. So he's going to judge this dispute. They set out a cushion for the messenger of Allah, and he sat on it. Then he said, bring me the Torah. It was brought, and he took the cushion from beneath him and placed the Torah on it and said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. So this is a copy, unless you're, unless our, our Muslim friends in Adnan want to say that this is actually, you know, these were time-traveling Jews and they brought back the original Torah that didn't include all these stories. You're talking about the Torah that existed in 7th century Arabia among Jews. We know what that Torah said. We have copies of the Torah well before that. You have the stories. You have the same stories that we have today. Muhammad says, I believe in you and the one who revealed you. What does that non say? I don't believe in you. I just believe a few things out of you. David, let's go for the knockout. Contradicting his God, contradicting his prophet. Go ahead. Since you went to the Hadith, because I was going to limit myself to the, to, uh, to the Quran, but since Adnan goes said, you want the knockout, David? The mm -hmm. annihilation? Yeah. Okay, guys, this is where you need to hear. I promise you, I'm going to put the articles in the description box by the grace of Jesus Christ. Let me read to you Sad Bukhari. And David, you know, by the way, I've taught every, David everything you know. So mm -hmm. he, to him, he's just like, okay, <sighs> all right, he's bored with me. Okay, it's a lengthy one, but guys, please pay attention. Sad Bukhari, volume four, number 353. That's the old number. I don't know what the modern number is. I'm not that rich to get the Well, anyway. Narrated Abu Huraira, Sahil Bukhari, volume 4, number 353. This is the end of Adnan Rashid's career as a Muslim apologist. If he's honest to God, he needs to turn to Jesus Christ because he's his war is against Allah and his messenger. Narrated whoa, Abu Huraira. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, just one quick comment. 
Johnny Two Shoes says, I cannot answer all of you, but I uh, but I could, but I'm on slow mode. David, that is a weak hadith, as I recall. False. False. Here we go. Again. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it up. Go, go ahead and read your hadith, Hassan. Sam. I'll go ahead and get the hadith up there for him. Yes. And you, yeah, and it says it's Hassan. But mm -hmm. anyway, guys, read this. Guys, read this. And we can talk about Daif. Man, I love, I love the Muslims when they make our case for us. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus Christ. Guys, let's see if he's going to say this is false. This is Bukhari. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Narrated Abu Huraira, 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 the prophet said, a prophet amongst the prophets carried out a holy military expedition. The Muslim translation, not mine. So he said to his followers, anyone who has married a woman and wants to consummate the marriage and has not done so yet should not accompany me, nor should a man who has built a house but has not completed its roof, nor a man who has a sheep or she camels and is waiting for the birth of their young ones. So the prophet carried out the expedition, and when he reached the town at the time or nearly at the time of the Asr prayer, he said to the son, O oh son, you are under Allah's order, and I am under Allah's order. O oh Allah, stop it, the son from setting. It was stopped till Allah made him victorious. Then he collected the booty, and the fire came to burn it, but it did not burn it. So he said to his men, some of you have stolen something from the booty. So one man from every child should give me a pledge of allegiance by shaking hands with me. They did so, and the hand of the man got stuck over the hand of the prophet. Then the prophet said to the man, the theft has been committed by your people. So all the persons of your tribe should give me the pledge of allegiance by shaking hands with me. The hands of two or three men got stuck over the hand of their prophet. And he said, you have committed the theft. Then they brought a head of gold like the head of a cow and put it there, and the fire came and consumed the booty. The prophet added, then Allah saw our weakness and disability, so he made booty legal for us. Guys, Muhammad in Bukhari just confirmed Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1 to 9. Just confirmed Joshua's expeditions in the book of Joshua against I and the king of Jerusalem, which you can find in Joshua chapter 7 and chapter 10. But David, last time I checked, weren't these the same injunctions to wipe out the Canaanites? Mm -hmm. And Muhammad just called that a holy expedition? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yep. Bye bye, Adnan. Your career is over. Um, and just for the benefits of uh, uh, Johnny Two Shoes here, we have, I hope you can see this. We don't need to read it again since I already read it. But uh, you just want to see the grade there, Johnny. That does not say Daif. And the question is, why Why would you want it to be Daif? Right? We know. You want yeah, it. We know. Yeah. <laughs> you want it. You want this story about Muhammad saying that he believes in the Torah, not just some not just some Torah from 2,000 years earlier that didn't exist anymore, the Torah that the Jews still had with them. The, the copy of the Torah that Jews would, if you said, Jews, bring me the Torah, they would bring you a copy of it. That's what Muhammad puts on the judgment cushion and says, I'm not, I'm not the judge here. You Jews, you have your Torah. Now, why would Johnny Two Shoes not want that to be the case think about it sam yeah. isn't isn't muhammad just saying exactly what what allah said that they that the jews yeah. have the torah the jews have the torah so they don't need muhammad so notice yeah. notice this because again this is this is so sad you've got allah the clearest communicator in all of history, saying, Jews, you do not need Muhammad because you have the Torah. And then we read a hadith, which gives the historical background for this, and Muhammad says, hey, Torah, I believe in you. And the Muslims want to say, no, we hadith, we hadith. It can't be Muhammad affirming the Torah that still existed at that time, because that would mean that Allah was correct. <laughs> Why are you so worried about Allah being correct? Yeah. See, you see how bad they want to control Allah? You see how bad they want to tor just torture us? In my earlier video, I said it's like a torture chamber, right? Like, remember those old torture chambers? You wanted someone to yeah. confess that they're a witch or something like this? So you, you put them on a rack, you just started stretching them out and breaking their bones and ripping their bones out of, you know, out of joint and stuff like that. And uh, hmm. until they can, until they said what you demanded, they say, right? You can waterboard someone until they, uh, until they say what you want. That's how Muslims treat, treat Allah. Allah yeah. says right there in the right there in the Quran, Jews have the Torah. You, Adnan doesn't want it. Why? Because they want to still they want to attack our they want to attack the Bible. Right. That's it. That's the very soul of modern Islam is wanting to attack the Bible. Problem is, Allah says not to. Allah affirms our the, the Torah and the Gospel. 
So you guys have to say, ah, but the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted. Not what Allah says. Allah affirms the Torah that was with, that the Jews had during the time of Muhammad. The Quran affirms the gospel that the Christians had during the time of Muhammad. And if, if Allah meant something else, he even fooled Muhammad because Muhammad yeah. said the Jews and the Christians still have the Torah and the gospel. Who says otherwise? We've got Johnny Two Shoes saying that that Muhammad was wrong and Allah was wrong, and trying to oh it must be daif. It can't it can't be it can't be it, it can't be reliable. It has to it has to be it has to be rough. Otherwise Allah meant what He said, and we can't have that. And uh, and Adnan, of course, and Muslims, you go Muslim, you can go to Muslims around the world. They have absolutely no respect for the words of their God and the words of their Prophet on this issue. Yeah, but David, you don't get it. See, I got to help you here. Mm -hmm. The Quran was designed to be the most eloquently unclear book in order to allow Muslims to explain its meaning. What's wrong with you, Kafir? Yeah. Let me repeat, you don't understand what eloquence means. It means it's the most eloquently unclear, incoherent babble because Allah in His mercy wants the Muslims to help explain the Quran so they can dig deeper into it. What's wrong with you, Kafir? Come on, man. All right, well, Darn you. one second, one second, one second. Um, had a comment here, okay. All right. <clears throat> and as you're bringing up that comment, let me make a comment to the Christians. Again, dishonesty of Adnan. I have an article where I, 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 I've written, there is a surah. We can mention it later because it's not the topic. Where it says, David repented of his sin. The Quran doesn't explain what that sin is. And the narrations say, he repented of his sin of committing adultery. But well, we can talk about that later. But here's another thing, folks, I want you to get. Did you know that Adnan conveniently mentions Lot and his daughters? He forgets the context, why that happened. But you mm -hmm. know what he didn't mention, folks? Guys, I want you to pay attention to the trickery here, mm -hmm. the, the <clears throat> scheming. The Quran agrees with the Bible that Lot was willing to hand over his daughters to be ravished and raped in order to protect the two guests. But that part he doesn't comment on. I guarantee you, if that part of the Bible wasn't in the Quran, where it says that Lot was going to hand over his daughters to the crowd to be raped and ravished, he would have condemned the Bible for attacking a holy prophet of God who would dare hand over his daughters to be raped and ravished instead of trusting Allah. But he doesn't attack that part of the story. Do you know why he doesn't attack that part of the story? Because it's in the Quran. But I guarantee you, if it wasn't in the Quran, how dare you portray Lot as willing to have his daughters ravished and raped to protect his guests when he's a prophet and he knows Allah Almighty will protect him. Mm -hmm. But he won't say that. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. And, and here, here's here's the amusing part, right? Um, first of all, Sam, is Lot, is Lot even a prophet in the Bible? No. Nowhere yeah. is it yeah. said explicitly that he's a prophet. <laughs> Lot is he's a, a righteous man who burned in his soul, but no, we're not. he's not said to be a prophet. Yeah, Lot is... is a relative of Abraham. That's it. That, that's 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 who he is, right? Um, he's he's somehow important enough that that God wants to rescue him, right? Um, but I mean, Lot could have ended up being an axe murderer. It's not. It's, it's a it's irrelevant to us, right? Uh, but notice in Islam, they they view him as a prophet, and they don't want to they don't want to believe that prophets did bad things. So notice they'll just go and they'll just start cutting things out. Oh, this is a bad story about Lot, who was not a prophet according to the Bible, but he's a prophet according to us. Therefore, let's read him as a prophet, and we can't believe that his daughters got him drunk in order to attempt to repopulate the earth. Because keep in mind, they saw all this destruction. His daughters are thinking, oh, the world's been destroyed. We've got to repopulate the earth. Let's have, let's, our dad's the only guy around. Let's get him drunk. So even according to the Bible, Lot wouldn't have done that, right? They had to get him drunk in order to do that, right? But notice, notice, Anand wants to just chop that part out and Muslims across the board want to just chop that part out. And how how are how in the name of common sense are you doing that right it, it's i mean th think about what they do sam they want to go through the entire bible cut out every negative story about every negative uh, every negative thing about prophets right whereas the bible yeah. reports them if you're a prophet in the bible and you do something messed up the bible says wow you did something messed up there and you be judged for that right and then the muslims want to come along oh we would never do that we'll just cut that part out well guess what sam if they cut out every negative thing about uh, that, that a prophet ever did and they're ending up with all these perfect wonderful prophets what does that leave them with Muhammad? You still got a guy who had sex with a nine-year-old girl and took the wife of his own adopted son, and he bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves. Um, you've got a guy who had sex with his slave girls, uh, once got in trouble for having sex with a slave girl, swore an oath that he would stop having sex with a slave girl, then broke the oath, claiming that, that God told him to. 
Uh, he had a wife when she got old and, and out of shape. Uh, he's going to divorce her for it. And she had to relinquish some of her marital privileges to get him to not kick her to the curb because no one's allowed to marry Muhammad's wives after her. She would have been a she would have been a just a, a widow. She wouldn't even have been allowed to to marry Sam. The better Muslims make all other prophets look, the worse Muhammad would look 100%. by comparison. Right, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Especially you know a guy that goes around you know prostituting women, calling it muta, mm -hmm. and like you said, even abolish adoption. Oh, but no, JB, you understand. That's the mercy of Allah. Nice. See, that's what you don't get. Sam, Sam, Sam. I, I, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think I think that seven minute video I could turn into like ten videos. I think Anand's <laughs> I think Anand's little video there I could just I could just do that right. Oh, you don't want to believe that story about Lot? Blah 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 blah. And just go through it. Well, thank you, Anand. Mm -hmm. He doesn't learn his lesson. He's a gold mine. What did you do? Look what he made you do to Muhammad and the coronavirus. Yeah, Anand's not learning, mm -hmm. man. He doesn't learn his lesson. Um. All right. So we have a comment here from Jesus was an Adam. Notice, notice, everyone. Uh, notice. Uh, huh? uh, is that a Muslim? I mean, he's defending Islam here. Um, Jesus was an Adam. He said, uh, "Where does it say?" that they do not need Allah. The verse is talking about the hypocrites who wanted to ask the prophet for their desires. The prophet told them to follow the word G. Uh, let's just read it again. So they come So they, they, they come to Muhammad to, this is to settle a dispute. Let, let's get the judgment. Let's get the judgment. You're the prophet. You're the leader here. Allah responds, why do they come to you for judgment, O Muhammad, when they have the Torah before them? wherein is the judgment of Allah. Now it says, yet they turn back after this, but that's not, the, the point was they have the Torah. That's the authority here. Allah asks, why are they coming to you, Muhammad? Now, if he's saying, why are they coming to you? They already have the Torah. The Torah contains the judgment of Allah. What does that mean? Do they need to come to Muhammad? Yeah. No. How much, how much more clear could Allah make it, right? Yeah. All right. Should we check out another clip? Yeah, and by the way, uh, he says need Allah because Allah is assuming the Torah is his revelation. So if they go to Torah, they're coming to Allah. So I'm confused by even the way he formulated that question, right? Because he says, where does it say they don't need Allah? No, no, they don't need no, Muhammad. No, they don't yeah. need Muhammad. Yeah, they don't need Muhammad. They yeah, have the word see, of Allah. Allah. But that tells you that Allah assumes the Torah they have is his word. So mm -hmm. if they come to the Torah, they're coming to Allah. So thank you for proving our point mm -hmm. that the Torah is not corrupt. But go ahead, brother. All right. One more clip. Um, this one's pretty much the same. He just does it with uh, with the gospel rather than with the uh, with the Torah. So when the Quran talks about the Torah and the gospel, the Quran is talking about the original Torah of Moses, which does not exist anymore. Mm. And the Quran talks about the original gospel, which does not exist in its entirety. Does it exist in part? Absolutely. We as Muslims believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ has survived in documents that can be seen today. For example, the New Testament. We believe there are remnants of the gospel, the original gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to be found in the text of the New Testament. In fact, in the four gospels, there are remnants, for example. In chapter 5 of the Quran, same chapter, we are told that Jesus said to the Israelites, وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلُ اُعْبَدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ O oh, the children of Israel, worship one Lord, your God and my God. This is amazing. This is amazing. Where was this said? In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29 clearly confirms this. So the Quran is simply alluding to the fact that that particular portion in the Gospel of Mark is definitely from the original Gospel of Jesus Christ. Not all of the Gospel of Mark. That particular passage has been confirmed. Uh, uh, you, go ahead and finish listening to that, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I saw he's quoting where Jesus says, Allah is my Lord, your Lord. Okay, I get it. I get the gist. All right, now he specifically says, the Gospel of Jesus has survived in remnants, right? So you've got the gospel of Jesus, which the Quran is affirming, but it only exists later in remnants in yeah. the New Testament. This is the same guy who started off his video by saying that the Quran nowhere claims that the gospel has been corrupted. The, Quran, mean... the Quran doesn't say that the gospel has been corrupted, and yet he's saying the gospel survives in little pieces little fragments in other sources that totally distort the meaning this this yeah. is this is amazing here 
this serves as its own refutation. Guys, I want you to thank Adnan, go to his comment section and say thank you again for pro proving that the Quran and the Hadith make Muslims incoherent <clears throat> and argue in circles and also not realize how they're contradicting themselves and how they speak out of both sides of their mouth. The text of the gospel has never been corrupted. But that text doesn't survive. Only remnants survive in the corrupted four Gospels, and yet the text of the Gospel is never corrupted. Say that enough, maybe then. If I repeat it more than once, it'll sink in. And uh, side note, folks, did you see what he said? He goes, the Quran confirms the original Torah given to Moses. Okay. Now, I do believe the Torah was given to Moses. God inspired Moses by the Spirit to write the Torah. And the Torah is what we have in our possession because that's the Torah that the Quran confirms. But, folks... I want you to challenge Adnan. Go to his video and say, here's our challenge for you, Adnan. Show us where the Quran says, and I hope there are Muslims here will take me up on this challenge. And there's a reason why I'm issuing this challenge. Because it again shows that they're dependent on the Bible for this information. The very Bible they're calling into question, though the Quran says the Bible is the uncorrupt, preserved word of God. He said the original Torah, the Arabic for, word for Torah, instruction, instructions, was given to Moses. Folks, you know there's not a single verse in the Quran that tells you who the recipient of the Torah is? There's not a single verse in the Quran that says the Torah was given to Moses. It says a book, Kitab, was given to Moses. So my challenge, Adnan, and I hope he takes me up on this debate challenge because I'm going to have a field day with him. I want to say, Adnan, can you show me the Quran where it says the original Torah given to Moses? He won't be able to show me because it's not there. So I'm going to ask Adnan a follow-up question. Where did you get this understanding the Torah was given to Moses? Either he's going to have to appeal to the Bible, which he just called into question, or the Hadith. But the Hadith now is going to destroy his case and prove David Wood is right and Muhammad is a false prophet. Because those are the same Hadiths that David cited saying that Torah that the Jews had, that is the Torah of Moses preserved in uncorrupt form. You can't have your cake and eat it too, it none. You go to the Hadith, you destroy your position, show that David Wood is right, Muhammad is a false prophet. You go to the Bible, you destroy your position and show, once again, that Bible has to be the Word of God, that God has preserved, what, which we are to use to judge your prophet and make sense out of what the Quran says. You lose either way, Adnan. Hey, Surprise, David. Hey, hey, ch hey check this out, Sam. Uh, Ahmed Haki said, uh, can you read the whole Tafsir Ibn Kathir? of Surah Maida 68. Then read the next verse. You'll understand from the two that Torah and Bible are corrupted, but those who are good are going to heaven. Now notice, he can't tell us, go to the Quran to find that the Torah and the Bible are... We know that Ibn Kathir believed that the... We I know that, that Ibn Kathir believed that the, the, the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted. We know that he has to take these passages and try to give them a meaning and to, in, to interpret them as if Allah is saying that they've been corrupted. We're saying, where does Allah say that? That's why you guys need people like Adnan Rashid and Ibn Kathir to tell you what Allah really means, because you can't, you can't quote Allah, because all Allah ever does is affirm our scriptures. We, under, we understand we can go to Ibn Kathir and a and hundred other Muslim commentators very easily, and they'll say, yep, perfect corruption, it's all been corrupted. What does is, what is, what is your God say? O oh, people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. And, the, and, the, and by the way, the Quran distinguishes between the revelation given to us and the revelation given to Muslims, right? Remember, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and that which has been revealed to you. The Quran distinguishes between the recipients of the revelations. So don't try and insert that and in saying, oh yeah, it's telling you to believe in the, the, the Quran too. No. Yeah, and let me add when you're let me Go add ahead. another point. Ibn Kathir, just folks, I promise you again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. All these articles I'm gonna post in the description box, Lord willing, right after this. Mm -hmm. He mentioned Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir was a student of Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, but he doesn't tell you that Ibn Taymiyyah had another renowned Muslim student who was a scholar who wrote books named Ibn Qayyim. Here it is, I have a citation. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah. He wrote on this topic about the Torah. I want Ahmad Haki to hear, because he wanted Ibn Kathir. I'm going to give him another student of Ibn Taymiyyah, considered one of the greatest Muslim scholars, by Salafi Muslims, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah and Al-Ighadat Al-Lafin, Al Volume 2. 
El ich, um, that's not El. Sorry. Well, well, Arabic, say that five times fast. Ihadat el Lahfan, volume two, page 351. He mentions that among the Muslim scholars at the time of his writing, there were three views regarding the Torah. One that said it's corrupted, like Ibn Kathir. Another that said only minor parts, minor corruptions, only a few parts are corrupted, but overall it remains substantially the same. Only few minor corruptions. And another group that says it's incorruptible. So let me quote what he cites as evidence cited by this group of Muslims to show the books of God, Allah, which includes the Torah, are not corrupted. Now, David, they're going to sound like you because they're going to use the similar arguments you do. Now, let me read this. This is an article. On the other side, another part, party of Hadith and Fiqh scholars said, these changes took place during its interpre interpretation, not during the process of its revelation. This is the view now notice who he cites as his authority. Abi Abdullah Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari, who said in his Hadith collection, and I just quoted it, and he's quoting it, no one can corrupt the text by removing any of Allah's words from his books, but they corrupted it by misinterpreting it. Al-Razi, another renowned Muslim commentator, agrees with this opinion. So I'm going to skip his view because it's long. Now notice this. Also, whenever the Prophet would ask them, the Jews, concerning the prophecies about him in the Torah, they were not able to remove them either, and they would respond by stating that they are not about him, and they are still waiting for the Prophet in their Torah. Now, Abu Dawood, you just cited this hadith, David. Mm -hmm. Abu Dawood narrated in his collection that Ibn Umar, what you just cited, which Johnny Tushu says it's weak, but Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi and other scholars quoted this as proof that Muhammad thought the Torah is not corrupt. Notice what he cites. A group of Jewish people invited the Messenger of Allah to a house. When he came, they asked him, Abu Qasim, one of our men committed adultery with a woman. What is your judgment against him? So they placed the pillow and asked the Messenger of Allah to sit on it. Then the Messenger of Allah proceeded to say, bring me the Torah, their copy. When they brought it, he removed the pillow from underneath him and placed the Torah on it and said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. Now notice what he says. The scholar said, if the Torah was corrupted, he would not have placed it on a pillow and he would not have said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. Then finally, this group of scholars also said, Allah said, and the word of your Lord has been accomplished truly and justly. There is none who can change his words. He's the hearing, the knowing. Quran chapter 6, verse 115. David, I'm, I'm shocked. These scholars mm -hmm. use what you quote, chapter 6, verse 115, use the hadith of Abu Dawud, and they use the quotation from Bukhari that I cited to come to the same conclusion that you and I do. Mm -hmm. The books of God can't be corrupted. That includes the Torah. And, and really, Sam, this, this proves uh, one, of the, one of the ongoing points that we make that, I mean, we say, hey, if Allah meant something else, he must be the worst communicator of all of history, and so must Muhammad. And... Think about this. If I'll, uh, According to what Muslims tell us, according to what Anan Rashid tells us, Allah is so unclear that he even misled Muhammad because Muhammad thought that Jews and Christians still have the Torah and the gospel. But then you have later Muslim scholars who are saying exactly what we say. There's no way this can be talking about the corruption of the Bible. <laughs> Muhammad wouldn't have pointed to that and said, hey, that's the word of God. He wouldn't have said, I believe in you and the one who revealed you. Allah wouldn't have said that no one can change his words if his words have been changed over and over again. There's no way this. And so there. notice, if Muslims are right, then we're, we're proven right, right? If Anan Rashid is right about the Torah and the gospel, then we're right. Allah is so unclear in his speech that even Muslim scholars, people who dedicated yeah. their lives to understanding the Quran and the Hadith, they're misled by him. And they're saying, no way their, their books can be corrupted because of what Allah and Muhammad say. So, they're, so they're, they're led astray by Allah and Muhammad. Exactly. But remember, that's a surprise, David. A surprise. Hey, check this out. Um, you have by a, the way, was that it for him? Was that it for him or he got more from him? Who? Uh, no, was we, that we, it? Yeah, no, we got one or two more clips, but uh, we have a little side note here. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell said, <laughs> I don't know if this is actually a Muslim or someone who's joking, but I know there are Muslims who, who use this ridiculous, ridiculous 
argument. It's a side note, but it's so funny that I actually put it up on the screen. He says, I'm a Muslim, and I challenge you to prove this wrong. How does God know that Pharaoh's body will be preserved? How is that possible, Sam? <laughs> Is, is it was it, is it serious? Or? I I I'm I, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming. I mean, I don't know, guys. It, guys, is, is he being serious here? Is Mister is yeah, Mister yeah. O'Donnell serious or is he is he joking? Because that is one of. I didn't think there was anyone, who who still took that seriously. Uh, let, let let me give you a quick rundown. One. The Quran doesn't say that his body would be preserved. It says that he would be preserved in his body, meaning that 100%. he would survive. That's one. Uh, two, the actual body that Muslims point to and say that's the body of that's the body of Pharaoh that the Quran refers to. No, it wasn't. You got the wrong. You got the wrong Pharaoh. You got the wrong Pharaoh for the time of the Exodus. And uh, three, that body has actually been examined. This person had severe arthritis. He certainly been, wouldn't have been following the children of Israel into the Red Sea. This person would, be, would have been immobilized when he was old, right? So mm -hmm. there's no possible way to interpret this as anything miraculous. And you're serious. Oh, Mr. O'Donnell said he's serious. And so, okay, Mr. O'Donnell, just to review, the Quran doesn't say that his body would be preserved. God says, I will preserve you in your body, meaning you're going to survive. Not that your body's going to be preserved and be found later. That's that's one. Two, wrong Pharaoh. That is not the, the, the Pharaoh, the body that Muslims point to is not the Pharaoh of the Exodus. Three, the body that you do point to, this is not the sort of person who was chasing anyone around. He would have been bedridden. He was too messed up. So he didn't die chasing the Israelites down and die in, die in the die in the in the flood. So it, there's no possible way this could be anything miraculous, yeah. and yet this is your of all the things you could have challenged us on. That's your challenge. And, and let me put the icing add? on the cake. Oh yeah, icing on the cake. Again, you're gonna be some dude. Do you have what? Don't you have an article on? I have an article on this. Yeah. And even the Muslims admit this story was stolen from the Bible. Let me read to you where it comes from. Exodus 14, 28 to 30. Folks, where did the Quran get the notion? And like David Wood said, it even got it wrong because it mixed in what the Bible says with later Jewish rabbinic interpretation. So what did Muhammad do? He heard what the Jews were saying about the Pharaoh and convoluted it, mixed it up. But let me show you what the Bible says about the body of Pharaoh. Exodus 14, 28 to 30. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived, but the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Now watch. That day the Lord, Yehovah, Jehovah, Lord Yahweh, saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. So they saw their bodies dead on the shore from what happened, from the drowning. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord Jehovah displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses' a servant. Now, how do I know it includes the Pharaoh? Psalm 136, verses 13 and 15, specifically verse 15. Psalm 136, verses 13 and 15. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, who love endures forever, and brought Israel through the midst of it, who love his love endures forever, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. So let's do the math. Pharaoh and the army were swept in Red Sea, further proving they got the wrong Pharaoh. And then the Israelites saw the bodies of the Pharaoh and the Egyptians laying there, prone, dead, on the shore. So what the Quran is simply doing is aping the Bible, but incorrectly, because the Quran is including rabbinic interpretation. And here I won't, it's not my opinion. Here is the late Muslim scholar Sayyid Abu Al, Abu Ala, man, these names, Abu Ala Maududi. Abu al-Ala Maududi in his commentary on chapter 10 of the Quran, verse 1994. Notice what he admits. He says, though this is not mentioned in the Bible, it is explicitly recorded in the Talmud in the following words, where it quotes Pharaoh saying, Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Guys, who would have thunk it? Muhammad parrots a Talmudic fable about what happened to Pharaoh as historical fact and claims it's revelation from God. So what he thought was proof of Muhammad's prophethood exposes the fraud of Muhammad. He was simply an ear. Whatever he heard, he mimicked and said Allah sent it to him. Thank you for giving us more proof that he's a fraud who contradicts the Bible and therefore an antichrist. Uh, Sam, uh, <laughs> our friend's still going. He says, God tells us this is a sign for the disbelievers. And he says, you guys still won't believe after this proof. 
Well, uh, th this would be well, the worst proof. This would be the worst proof in the history of humanity, if that's what Allah meant. Uh, and by the way, let me, let me just give you a, a Sahih International translation here. So Allah says, so today we will save you in your body that you may be to those who succeed you a sign. He's saying he's going to save him, right? Yeah. Yusuf Ali, this day shall we save you in your body that you may be assigned to those who come after you. The Muslim uh, argument that you hear from people like Yusuf Estes and so on, guys, do, do five minutes of research on this stuff before you bring it in here and embarrass yourself like this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got, uh, one, the Quran does not say, I'm going to preserve your body and then your body will be found. That's what Muslims, that's what Muslim uh, apologists say that the Quran is saying. It doesn't. He says, I'm going to preserve, I'm going to, I'm going to preserve you in your body. I'm going to save you, right? So that's one. Second, wrong Pharaoh. <laughs> You've got the wrong Pharaoh. The Pharaoh that they point to and say, you see, it's his body is not the Pharaoh of the Exodus. Wrong Pharaoh. Wrong Pharaoh. All right. Number three, the Pharaoh, the, the, the body that you point to, the body that you people point to and say, you see, that's the body that Allah said he would preserve. That guy would have been bedridden for years. He was messed up. They've studied his body. They know he had all sorts of medical problems. He wasn't he wasn't chasing the Israelites across the world. Didn't happen. Yeah, if this good. is the if this is the proof that we're rejecting, my goodness, Allah is not only the worst communicator in all of history, he's got the worst arguments right. in all of history. All right. Yeah, so, even 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 Ibn Kathir says it was a sign for the Israelites. Yeah. What do you mean, disbelievers? It's a sign for the Israelites so they can believe because yeah. they were doubting whether Pharaoh died. That's in his commentary. So anyway, no, so Sam, it, it's his body. Unfortunately. So what Allah is really saying is, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to save you in your body. So I'm saying this wrong, but don't worry. I'll, I'll get another body and they'll find another body. And then I'll have followers who are so stupid that they think this is actually miraculous confirmation of the Torah. I mean, of the Quran. It's miracle. But man, you don't understand. You needed the Muslims to explain to you the meaning of the Quran because it's the most eloquently yeah. incoherent babble mm -hmm. on the face mm -hmm. of God's green earth. What's wrong with you? Here you have more. Here you have more. Uh, he says, uh, <laughs> Uh, Jesus wasn't Adam says what Torah what revelation the one revealed to Moses and Jesus where does Quran say they were following them show me the verse where Allah says that the books that they had were and then uh, I guess he continued dude look at what you're saying what books what books Muhammad says Jews bring me the Torah you're saying what Torah what to what Torah do Jews bring you if you say bring me the Torah so notice they've got the same delusions that they think Christians have all these different Bibles and stuff like that. And you say, Christian, bring me a Bible. Who knows? It could be like 50 million different things. Sam, do we know what Jews mean by the Torah? Of course yeah. we do, so because that, so it's their language that Muhammad is aping. We're dealing with people yeah. who are so utterly clueless that, yeah. I mean, we have to we have to explain things on like a first grade level because they've, yeah. they've been in this yeah. in this cult for so long. They've been in this cult for so long that they don't know what anyone means by anything. And you can't blame them. We can't figure out what their God means by anything. He's saying clear words. The Jews have the Torah. The Christians have the gospel. Muslims go, what? What do they mean by that? We don't know. We don't know what any of this stuff means. <laughs> wow. This is wild stuff. Oh, all right. Let's get back. Right. I think we got all, only one or two more clips left. Let's see what let's see what we got here. And I think the last one's uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty short. Um, all right. So we're back to, all right, Adnan. So the Quran also confirms that Jesus was sent to the Israelites. The Gospels also confirm that. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24 states that Jesus said, I was not sent to anyone but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is clearly confirmed in the Quran. That was definitely said by Jesus Christ. We have no doubt that that statement was made by Jesus Christ in some shape or form in his own language. Also, the Quran confirms that Jesus Christ was sent to confirm the previous law and again the gospel of matthew clarifies when the man came asking him questions when a man came asking jesus christ what shall he do to attain salvation jesus said follow the commandments follow the commandments we firmly believe that jesus christ had said that in some shape or form so the quran actually confirms those remnants of the original gospel of jesus christ in the current text of the new testament not that all the text of the New Testament is authentic, authoritative, and the rest. I'll let you finish that up, Sam. Yeah, no. yeah, I get the gist that 
since uh, Jesus was sent to the lost she she sheep of Israel and confirms the Torah. See, that's what the Quran is confirming. I get the gist of it, but okay. Yeah. So, I know, I, let me know you want to decimate this. Well, I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing over and over again. He starts off saying uh, the gospel has not been corrupted. Uh, it's the New Testament that's been corrupted. But if, 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 if I, I don't know what he means. If he said the New Testament, by his definition, the New Testament would be the corruption of the gospel, right? Yeah. The exactly. New Testament would have to be the corruption. If 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 there's if you don't have the gospel of Jesus left, you only have remnants, then the gospel was corrupted into the New Testament. But yes. he's already admitted the Quran never says that the gospel has been corrupted. So the Quran never says that what he said happens happened. The Quran doesn't say it. He's acknowledged this is complete incoherent nonsense. And notice he's doing the same thing he did with the Torah. Let's just go through, pick and choose all the little parts of the gospel. And we'll say those were in the gospel of Jesus. Um, and then anything we don't like, we'll say those things were changed, even though the gospel hasn't been corrupted. This is like, it, yeah. this is, I mean, this is like what I, I, I can't even speak on this. Like the, the, yeah, the, it's, it's the level of the level of, of critical back. thinking you, you would, you would not ex you would not expect this this horrible reasoning from a second grader. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's shockingly bad. But you know what's interesting, folks? If he's right in his interpretation of Matthew ten five to six and Matthew fifteen twenty four, he just destroyed the Quran and his own traditions, proving Muhammad is a false prophet. Here, here's the irony, folks. And by the way, Matthew fifteen twenty four. If you read in context, Jesus had a specific meaning. We can unpack that, but for the sake of time, let me just show you. How what he just said proves the Quran is a lie. He pointed to these passages as genuine remnants of what Jesus said. We know Jesus would have said something like this in his in his language, Aramaic, which we can con comment on that as well. But if it's true that Matthew says Jesus was only sent to the Israelites, Muhammad is a fraud, the Quran is a fraud, he's a false prophet, so he's only helping us prove he's a false prophet. Why? He misquotes chapter 61, verse 6, in that, by interpreting that passage, he limits it to he limits Jesus's ministry only to the children of Israel because it says Jesus was sent to the children of Israel announcing. He assumes that the Quran means he sent only to the children of Israel. Well, I can play that game and show from statements in the Quran where because Muhammad was sent to the mother of, of all towns to Mecca and to the Arabs, he's only for the Arabs. But then Adnan would tell me that's not fair. The Quran doesn't say he was just sent to the Arabs. Yes, it specifies that he came to the Arabs, but his message is for all mankind. Then Adnan, why are you doing that with what the Quran says about Jesus? Because folks, let me read to you what the Quran actually says about Jesus' ministry. And I'm going to quote Muhammad, what he says about Jesus' ministry. Chapter 19, verse 21, folks. Chapter 19, verse 21. What does the Spirit tell Mary about Jesus' mission? He said, so it will be, your Lord said, that is easy for me. And we wish to appoint him as a sign, ayah, to mankind and a mercy from us. And it is a matter already decreed. Now, mankind, nas, he'll say, well, that means just one specific mankind. Ah, oh, but hold on. Chapter 21, verse 91 of the Quran. Chapter 21, verse 91. And she who was chaste, therefore we breathed into her something of our spirit and made her and her son a token assigned for all peoples. It uses two words in these two verses, nas and nas and alamin, all beings, not just one particular group of people. That's chapter 19, verse 21, chapter 21, verse 91. And now here's what's shocking. Chapter 3, verses 3 to 4, you know what it says about the Torah and the gospel, who they were given to? Here it is, chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. It is he who sent down to thee, supposedly Muhammad, in truth, the book, confirming what is between your hands. And he sent down the law and the gospel before this as a guide to mankind, not just the children of Israel. And the word here is anas. You know why that's important? Because in chapter 2, verse 185, it says, Allah sent down the Quran, which is for mankind using the same language. The Quran is for Anas, mankind. The Torah and the Gospel is for Anas, mankind. If you're going to say the Quran is for all mankind, then you're going to have to be consistent and say the Torah and the Gospel is for all mankind as well. It uses the same language to describe the extent of the impact that the Torah and Gospel has on the world. For all mankind, for all beings, not just to the children of Israel. And then finally, so I don't want to belabor the point, but I got to mention this. 
Here's what Muhammad said about Jesus' mission, or what Muslims said about Jesus' mission. Okay? This comes from Sirat Rasulullah, edited by Ibn Asham, and I'm reading the English translation by, by Alfred Guillaume. Alfred Guillaume, page 653 in the English translation, The Life of Muhammad. Guys, pay attention, because it also confirms that Paul is a true, inspired spokesperson for Jesus Christ. Yazid bin Abu Habib and Misri told me that he found a document in which was a memorandum. Tabari, the names of those, this is now he's getting this from Tabari, of the apostles sent to the countries and kings of the Arabs and non-Arabs, and what he said to his companions when he sent them. I sent it to Muhammad bin Shihab al-Zuhri. Now Tamri chimes in with a trusty countryman of his, and he recognized it. It contained the statement of the apostle, meaning Muhammad, went out with his companions and said, God has sent me as a mercy to all men, so take a message from me, God have mercy on you. Do not hang back from me as the disciples hung back from Jesus, the son of Mary. They asked how they had hung back. And he said, how did the apostles refrain and pull back from Jesus? And Muhammad said, he called them to a task similar to that which I have called you. Those who had to go on a short journey were pleased and accepted. Those who had a long journey before them were displeased and refused to go, and Jesus complained of them to God. Tabari adds, from that very night, every one of Jesus' disciples was able to speak the language of the people to whom he was sent. Jesus said, this is a thing which God has determined that you should do, so go. Now, real quickly, do you see Muhammad confirms the day of Pentecost? He says that God miraculously empowered the disciples to speak in the language of the people they were sent to, showing their message, mission is universal. Their message is universal, and God miraculously enabled them to speak the language of the people group. So the rest of the part, let me read the rest of the part. Those whom Jesus, son of Mary, sent, both disciples and those who came after them, in the land were, notice the name, folks, Peter, the disciple, and Paul with him. Wow, Ibn Ishaq. Peter and Paul were sent by God to represent Jesus, though Paul wasn't a disciple of Jesus, but a disciple of his apostles? Yes, and where did they go? Paul belonged to the followers, was not a disciple. They went to Rome. Surprise, surprise. Andrew and Matthew to the land of the cannibals. Thomas to the land of Babel, my ancestors, which is in the land of the east. Philip to Carthage, which is Africa. John to Ephesus, the city of the young men of the cave. James to Jerusalem, which is Aliyah of the city of the sanctuary. Bartholomew to Arabia. Uh-oh. Bartholomew, the apostle of Jesus, was sent to Arabia, which is the land of the Hejaz. Bartholomew was sent to preach to Muhammad's ancestors in Arabia, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Simon to the land of the Berbers. Judah was one of the disciples, was put in the place of Judas. David, does this sound like the Quran and Hadith limits Jesus' mission and his followers' mission only to the children of Israel? Uh, yep. The God, I mean, keep in mind, Sam, the gospel was uh, never corrupted, but uh, it was corrupted. So anytime okay. Allah is telling you one thing, he's simultaneously somehow saying the opposite. So which part of this which part of this contradiction aren't you willing to get on, Sam? I don't know, bro, because remember the Quran is miraculously, eloquently <clears throat> incoherent babble, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it. That's the surprise. Hey, uh, uh, Sam, here's a, here's a little one for you real quick. A little side note. This is from Money Talks. He says, why would God tell all the prophets before Jesus that I'm one and then change his mind and say, I'm three? God does not play oh. games with us, so please give a logical answer. And so, uh, Sam, what we have here is, a, is another example of, let me get all my information about Judaism and Christianity and the Old Testament and the New Testament from Muslim speakers. And those Muslim speakers say that, oh, everyone always said one in an absolute Unitarian sense. And then Christians came along and started saying three in a Trinitarian sense, even though they're also saying one, they're saying three in one. And therefore, the Christian message contradicted everything before it. Well, uh, one, one question, um, Muslims who are listening to your guys, did you bother for even a second to actually study what ancient Jews believed and what the ancient prophets said? Or yeah. did you just listen to the same guys who lie to you about everything else they ever tell you? Who did you listen to? I just listened to the same, I just listened to uh, my, my standard Muslim Muslim apologist. You mean the same guys who tell you that, that the, the, the Torah has been corrupted and the gospel has been corrupted, even though neither has been corrupted according to Allah, the same guys who lie to you about that? Yeah, those guys. 
And, and really, and now they're telling you that all the prophets before Jesus said one, again, in a Unitarian sense, we agree on one, right? Um, but one in a Unitarian sense, that's what all the prophets said. And then suddenly Christians come along and they start saying three. Uh, Sam, I'm going to go ahead and post a link to uh, Anthony's series on the Trinity in the yeah. Old Testament. Going to go ahead and post a link to that, but anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, anytime any Muslim wants to take up the challenge on what the Old Testament teaches about the unity of God and what the Quran teaches about the unity of God, I'm ready, willing, and able. Like I said, my challenge with none is, as the Quran teaches Tawheed, because even the oneness that money talks is referring to, not only is it not taught in the Hebrew Bible, not only is it not taught in the New Testament, it's not even taught in the Quran. Let me shock you Muslims, and I'm challenging you. Prove me wrong. Here's an open challenge. David would just said he'll host the debate on his channel. A channel. The Quran itself has its own corrupt form of a trinity. It's not the true trinity of the Bible, but it has a trinity nonetheless. In fact, it has a quadrinity, if we add the hadiths, even more than that. But I can show you from the Quran, Allah is not a singular person. That's why I'm challenging Adnan Rashid. Debate me. Does the Quran teach Tawheed? It doesn't. You've been deceived. You've been hoodwinked. You've been, um, you know, just misled. Let's do it. Let's see who's right. What do you got to fear? It's your book, right? The Quran is your book. You should have confidence to refute a kafir like me. One that the Quran says is the worst of all creatures, the worst of all beasts, right? You should be able to put me in my spot and show me that's one thing we'll refute you and decimate you on. Tawheed, it's clearly taught in the Quran. Take me up on it, school me, expose me if you think that this is an airtight argument from the Quran. But we know you won't, and I know Adnan won't. So I'm calling him out. Prove me wrong. Um, I'm not even sure what to do with some of these comments by uh, Jesus was an Adam. Uh, he says, uh, Quran says that Quran is the book that Moses and Jesus worshipped. Right, genius? They worshipped it out. Yeah, they right, genius. Them. So Jews had the Quran in their hands, right, genius, or parts of it, lol. So notice uh, our Muslim friend here just said <laughs> that according to the Quran, <laughs> Jesus and Moses worshipped the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, we love to we love to blast the Quran, uh, but, but they're just uh, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome I didn't stuff. know. Well, well, remember maybe hey. because because the Quran is the speech of Allah and it speaks and it's uncreated and yeah. worthy of worship. Maybe that's yeah. what it is. So okay. he's posing it on the Torah. Yeah. You never know. So, no, he says it's the Quran. So the so oh the Quran. Yeah, he, the Quran. Say, which... he says Quran says that Quran is the book that Moses and Jesus worshipped. Right? Did you Genius? see what my mind did? Yeah. Did you see what my mind yeah did? you tried to make sense I of went it. To auto correct mm -hmm. like i corrected thinking he's saying torah you tried you tried to make sense of it right? right you couldn't believe he's saying something this yeah, stupid no, I, right well, hey. dude i got shocked i mean i thought he said torah i could i mean <laughs> the level to say quran oh okay jesus oh, yeah. so this is a muslim telling us that jesus <laughs> and moses worshipped not allah uh but they worship the quran so notice you Sam, according to this, you have the Quran, which, by the way, according to Islam, actually, according to Muhammad, can actually appear in the form of, of a man. So according to our Muslim friend, uh, Jesus and Moses actually worship not only Allah, but also the Quran, meaning they're worshiping two things, and they're actually two personal things, and they're both eternal, and and they want to tell us that Islam is, is monotheistic here. Uh, he, he has a follow-up. I can debate you guys on this subject easily. A child can okay. refute you. Your arguments are right. so superficial. <laughs> All right, yeah, they're superficial, man. We got it. We got some super. Yeah. We got some superficial yeah. arguments, man. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, Jesus was an Adam. We're, we're going to get back to uh, Adnan now uh, because as as bad as Adnan's arguments are, they're they're still light years ahead of yours. Um, yeah. All right, Sam. Final final clip. But uh, Sam, actually, in this yeah, final I'm clip. This final clip, he actually put some verses up on the screen. Um, so it's going to be quiet. You're not going to hear something, but uh, you'll, you'll see them uh, in a bit. Okay. So it is now very clear that now. the Christian missionaries very clear. will present the interpretation of the reinterpretation of the reinterpretations, ignoring all our scholarship, all our views. This is exactly what I have told you, what I have explained to you, is the view of the Muslim scholarship, modern and classical and ancient. So. There goes David Wood's defense of the current Bible or the text of the New Testament from the Quran. There it goes. It is gone.
Um, Sam, we'll actually uh, come back to these verses. We'll look at them uh, one at a time. I just wanted to comment there. Uh, it, it seems that Adnan is interpreting this as me defending the New Testament uh, by appealing to the Quran. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not I don't believe in the Quran, right? I don't believe in the Quran. The purpose of this argument is to show that Islam is false. The purpose of this argument is to show that Islam is false. We mm. point out that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the gospel, not to defend our gospel, but to show you that since the Quran contradicts the gospel, the Qur Islam just self-destructs. The Quran self-destructs. It affirms scriptures that completely contradict itself, right? So, Islam self-destructs. That's the point. So I have no idea why he's interpreting this as us going to the Quran to try and muster up some defense of our book. All right, Sam, did you want to say anything in response to what he said before we actually look at the verses that he put up on the screen? Yeah, no, I only saw 2136. No, well, let's just go through it because it's ironic he's quoting Surah Al-Baqarah. But yeah, whatever he did, I only saw 2136. Mm -hmm. That's all that popped up. Is that all he quoted? Uh, no, no, no. He's got uh, he's got 279 and he might, he might have one uh, more up there. But uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. let's go ahead and we'll get that up there. And all right. So we have Surah 2, verse 136. Say, O believers, and I've got, to, I've got to pause now here so you don't need any sound, Sam. Say, O believers, we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the descendants and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. Now, guys, uh, I'm sure Sam has plenty to add, but I just want to point yes. out, look at this. We believe that there are all these books out there, and we draw no distinction between any of them. This makes no sense if Allah is somehow mysteriously claiming that they've all been corrupted, because that would be a pretty big distinction, wouldn't it? 100%, 100%. If every If every other book has been corrupted except one, there is one giant massive difference between all these books, right? And Allah is saying there's no, there's no... There's no difference, right? And Muslims, look, this is say, oh, believers. Muslims, you Muslims who are here. You Muslims. You Muslims who are, who are running around saying, ah, oh, the Torah has been corrupted. The gospel has been corrupted. Everything's been corrupted. The Quran is the only book that hasn't been corrupted. You are commanded to say, we believe in all these books and we draw no distinction between them. When you're the one saying, guys, we have to draw a distinction between the Quran and the other books because the Quran hasn't been corrupted and all these other books have been corrupted. So you are completely contradicting your own God. And Adnan puts it on the screen? Sam, yeah. Adnan puts this on the screen? To my, make our case for us. My goodness, my okay. goodness. And notice, notice, I, you've got these other books. What does that nun do when he's confronted with another book? Oh, let me go through and I'll pick and choose and I'll just pick anything I like and I'll throw out anything I don't like. And uh, that's, how I, that's how I use these other books. I guess... I guess he's kind of right because he does do that with the Quran, right? He does go to the Quran yep. and, oh, uh, I don't like that part about uh, people still having the gospel. And I don't like this part about people still having the Torah. So I'll just pick and choose. And so maybe maybe he's not actually drawing a distinction. He treats all books the same way. Let me go there, find the parts that I like. I'll yeah. keep those. And all the parts I don't like, I throw those out. And I treat everyone like that. That's, that's uh, welcome yeah, to Islam. I'm about to prove that after 279, that that's exactly what he did with chapter 2. He quoted one verse and ignored the entire surah, but mm -hmm. let's wait for 279. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, anything you want to add to this one? No, you did a phenomenal job in showing, like like you said. That's how I roll. If you make no distinction between any books, you can't say the previous books are corrupted because you are making a distinction. I hope that sunk in. Oopsie, we have a, <laughs> we have a comment from Mir over here who said, David Wood, I'm starting to think that Adnan Rashid is your agent pretending to be a Muslim. He is just proving that Islam is yeah. a fraud. Yeah. That's what I said, yeah. Yep. People are going to think we're paying him, right? <laughs> we're paying him. All right. Uh, let's watch a little more, and then I think, I think 279 is coming up next. All right. There's no music. Okay. Oh, now he just has a comment. Let's see. As for the current Bible... The following, okay, now he's saying where, where it shows that it's been corrupted. As for the current Bible, the following verses of the Quran categorically. Now, oh, notice, he didn't want to say unequivocally, but he does say categorically. That's, that's a, I'll, I'll give him categorically. We'll, we'll count that as unequivocally. As for the current Bible, the following verses 
of the Quran categorically state that the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians have been corrupted. Notice, Sam, it's not just the Jews. So he contradicts himself. Wow. The scriptures yeah. of the Jews and the Christians have been corrupted. All right. Here we go. I guess what an embarrassing if, video. Yeah. I guess if we don't have any, uh, any music, I'll just add my own soundtrack. Yeah. No, this is an embarrassment, what? but none, because notice he went from the first video saying there's nothing unequivocal, mm -hmm. but your scholars prove it's corrupt. Now admitting the, the Quran doesn't say the gospel is corrupt, yep. but then saying it does say it's corrupt. I mean, <laughs> make up your mind, dude. And, and what's funny is he's going to quote Surah 4 verse 157 again, which he already said in the other video is not is not unequivocal. So it's, it's not unequivocal, but uh, it's, it's categorical. All right. So here we go. Um, all right. All right. So woe to those. I've got it paused here, Sam. Okay. By the way, Sam, we don't need to. We don't read to, need to really massacre this verse. Uh, we'll give yeah. our thoughts on it because I decided I'm going to make a separate video on this. I jotted down some notes. I jotted yeah. down some notes, and I was I was up to nine reasons this can't possibly be referring to the uh corruption of the bible so i was up to nine reasons i just have to think of one more and then i'll have like 10 reasons yeah, uh, and so th so anyway the idea that this is the this is the verse muslims most commonly put forward as the unequivocal verse referring to the corruption of the gospel this is what i got i got this over and over and over again like a beating drum and notice if i get 10 reasons that this verse can't possibly be referring to the text, to, to the corruption of the gospel. My goodness, if that's what they mean by unequivocal, then uh, we need, yeah. they need to, I need to get them a dictionary. All right. Now, because you're going to do a video on it, I'm just going to throw out the verses, and I'll give you the links to the articles. Remember chapter 2 of the Quran? It's not just uh, verse 79. You have 286 verses in chapter 2. Guys, just note the following. I'm going to sum, summarize real quickly. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verses 40 to 44. So I'll repeat it twice. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. I'm just going to stick with chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. Chapter 2, verse 89 of the Quran, and verse 91. Chapter 2, verse 89, verse 91. Chapter 2, verse 97. And chapter 2, verse 101. Chapter 2, verse 97. Chapter 2, verse 101. And chapter 2, verse 121. All those verses say repeatedly like a beating drum, and it's going to be in his video. I know. I'm sure of it. Muhammad says to the Jews, because the context is speaking to the Jews, my Quran confirms what you have. I confirm what you already possess. I confirm what's in your hands. Repeatedly, he says, the Quran and me confirm what you have in your possession, what you already have, what's there right now. I'm confirming, so believe in me. And he is saying, why don't they believe in me? I'm saying what you have is true, and my book confirms what you have true, so I'm saying your scriptures are true. You're going to ignore that repeated emphasis by Muhammad that my Quran and me confirm what you have, Jews, in your possession right now, in your possession, those scriptures, they're true, and I confirm them, so believe in me, and then isolate 279, to make it say something it wasn't meant to say. So that's the first thing. And secondly, it says only a party of them wrote a book with their own hand. A party. So even if it's referring to corruption to, let's say, a biblical manuscript, the Quran is clear. It's a party that did it, not everyone. Because don't forget, at that time, the Old Testament had been widespread. It wasn't just in the possession of the Jews in Arabia. The Christians had copies of the Old Testament, and Christians all over the then known world had copies of the Old Testament, and Jews as well. To then take one verse, referring to a particular group, in a particular location, at a particular time, and then argue wholesale corruption, that shows how desperate you are, especially when you go to chapter 3, verse 113 and 114 of the Quran, chapter 3, verses 113 and 114, and chapter 3, verse 199, where it says, They are not all alike. There is a party among the Jews and Christians who will not sell the signs of Allah, but recite, read the scriptures as they should be recited. There you go. That was a quick summary. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, I just want to point out, yeah, I mean, the, the, the main thing, obviously, is th th this is Surah 2, verse 79. So this is the first... This is the first chapter revealed when Muhammad got to Medina. It's years later when he reveals Surah 5. And Surah 5 affirms 
that Jews and Christians still had the Torah and the gospel. Muhammad in the Hadith confirms that Jews and Christians still had the Torah and the gospel. So if you're telling us that as of the revelation of Surah 2, the Torah and the gospel, even though this isn't saying, you can read the context, it isn't saying one word about the gospel, but this verse is, uh, is magically saying that the Torah and the gospel had been corrupted, then Allah forgot all about it just a few years later, and he's senile. That's what you're telling us. And, Mah and so yeah. and so was Muhammad. That's what that's what you're telling yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's you're it? telling us. That, and, and you expect well, now. Notice they tell us to take their religion seriously when they treat it like this, right? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have ten reasons, but I'll, I'll just add. No, notice what this actually says. Woe to those, and they add in parentheses Israelites. Woe to those. What it actually says. Woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands, then say this is from Allah, in order to change it for a small price. Someone, someone get a, someone get one dollar, someone get one dollar ready, ready in the super chat. Send me a super chat and say, David, this is to write something from Allah. So someone give me a dollar in the super chat, and I'm going to refute. <laughs> I'm going to show you what 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 happened. By the way, this is not me trying to get a dollar. <laughs> yeah, just to make a point. Yeah. Huh? Just to make a point, yeah. I'm trying exactly. to make a point. All right. <clears throat> now, what we're going to have here is... You ready here? I'm giving a revelation. Surah 15. Surah 115, verse 3. Surah 115, verse 3 of the Quran. <laughs> says Muhammad was a false prophet. Now, notice what I just did. Woe to those... Woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands, then say this is from Allah. By the way, this is from Allah. I did it for the dollar ninety nine that <laughs> I did it that that <laughs> for that Vadanch just gave me. That's corrupt. I did this Thank for you, Tatiana. I did yeah. this for for a dollar ninety nine. Yep. Um and Tatiana Tatiana gave me a Canadian dollar. I'm gonna count that anyway. Okay. Right. But uh, I just wrote something. The Surah 115, verse 3 of the Quran, saying Muhammad was a false prophet. I'm saying that this is the Quran. So I wrote something with my own hands, and I said, this is from Allah. In order to exchange it for a small price, I got a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they earn. So, the rule that Muslims laid down, is, Sam, is if, someone's, if someone writes something and says, this is from God, then somehow the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted, right? It's not just it's not just what this person has written with his own hand is is now corrupted. It's the scriptures of the Jews and the scriptures of the Christians, even though Allah repeatedly confirms them and so does Muhammad. Somehow, if you write something, if you write something and claim that yeah, it's from God it, for a small oh. price, you've just corrupted the book. So Dude, the Muslims here for you, man. So both Adnan Rashid and all the Muslims who are using this in the chat, including Johnny Two Shoes, have just declared that the Quran has now been universally corrupted. And guys, if you just think about how stupid that is, right? <laughs> the idea that me sitting here, the idea that me sitting here writing something and saying it's 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 the Quran would somehow corrupt any Quran, let alone all Qurans, then you will understand how utterly stupid and ridiculous it is to say up oh, the Quran just condemns someone for writing something. Therefore, all the Torah around the world has been corrupted. And all the gospel around the world has been corrupted. No one was no one was in a position to corrupt the Torah that way or the gospel that way. They, they existed in too many different parts of the world. If someone ever decided, hey, I'm going to change this, guess what? It doesn't change in other areas. So if you really want to go that way, guys, and if you really want to say, oh, if, if the Quran condemns someone for saying someone wrote something for a small price, well, guess what? I just did the same with your book. And now your book's been corrupted. And you will immediately, somehow, you will now immediately see how stupid that is. But guess what? I can ask these same, I can, I can go, I could go to Adnan right now after pointing this out. And I could go to people in the chat right now and say, do you still think that, that Surah 2 verse 79 means corruption of the gospel around the world they'll, they'll say yep yeah, yep yeah, it does it does even though they just saw that even though they just saw this so they want they want they want to grant a rule they just can't imagine uh that rule actually applying to their own book so 
Bro, you need to do this more often, man, because you see how much super chats you got, man. We need to do this more. Maybe I need to start guys, doing the guys, finance my ministry. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. You made a ton, bro. Yeah, guys, uh uh just so you know, um just so you know, this is this is more about uh more about Sam. Uh Somewhere down the line, if Sam gets uh, Sam gets enough support, um, he's gonna move out my way, and we'll just uh, we'll have a little we'll build a little studio uh, yep. out my way, and we'll sit there going live every night. So that's planned. So if you wanna Amen. you wanna see yeah. some uh, cooler stuff uh, in the future, then help out Sam Shamu when we get a chance. And link to his channel is in the description box. All right, Sam. Well, there's not much left. There's 20 seconds left. So uh, let, ready to see what else there is? Yeah, I'm about to take Shahada tomorrow, bro. You're rocking me. Come on. All right, here we go. Now you have it. That's it. I'm done. All right, here you go. And indeed, there is among them a party who altered the... <laughs> All right, here you go, Sam. This is proving okay. This is proving the corruption of the text. This is what he said categorically proves the corruption of the text here, Sam. Here we go. And indeed, there is among them a party who altered the scripture... With their tongues, oh, you're kidding me, with bro. their tongues, so you may think it is from the scripture, but it is not from the scripture. <laughs> and they say, This is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. And they speak untruth about Allah while they know. So, Sam, you've got the Quran affirming the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the text of the, the Torah. You've got the Quran affirming the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the text of the gospel. You've got Allah saying that no one can ever change his words, but you do have complaints in the Quran about people altering the scripture with their tongues. Yes. And this yeah. means categorically, according to Adnan, that the that the the books have been corrupted. Now, Sam, let me just try this one more time, since that's the rule. That's the rule. Confirmed by countless Muslims. And notice, I mean he only put a couple verses up here. He obviously used his best. So the rule, according to Adnan, I've, I, again, I've got to make like 10 videos responding to Adnan's one little video because I can make so many videos proving that his book is corrupt using the rules he put forward. It will be absolutely hilarious. But look, look notice, a party who alter the scripture with their tongues, according to Adnan Rashid, if you alter a scripture with your tongue, i.e. you're saying it, then the text itself has been corrupted. All right. Well, did you guys know that the Quran says Muhammad was a false prophet? Um, I, I, I just said it. It's uh, chapter 115. Sober. It's chapter 115, oh. verse 3. I've just changed what the Quran says. With my mouth, according to Adnan Rashid, that means that the text of the Quran has been corrupted universally. Everywhere you go, the Quran has now been corrupted. No one can trust the Quran anymore. Uh, ball game, Muslims, yeah. Islam has been destroyed and refuted by the mighty rules of Adnan Rashid. And but not only that, David, don't forget, guys understand what David was saying, and he's going to have to do a video on this. If you misinterpret a book, meaning, because that's what it means with your tongue, you're not corrupting the text, you've corrupted the book. How many Muslims have you seen over the years, the ones we've debated, the ones we responded to, constantly, even with Adnan, this entire session, was a response to his misinterpreting the Quran. So according to Adnan Rashid, he has been corrupting the Quran ever since he got into apologetics. Anyone else that he disagrees with, like the Shia, when he accuses them of misinterpreting the Quran, he's now admitting they've corrupted the Quran. So in other words, according to his application of this passage, if you misinterpret the Quran with your tongue, you corrupted the text of the Quran, that means you have all these Muslims corrupting the text of the Quran over and over and over again because they all accuse of misinterpreting the Quran. And it's not just Sunni and Shia. Adnan knows this. In Sunni Islam, he's a Salafi. And he disagrees with the Ashari and the Maturidi regarding what the Quran means when it says Allah has eyes and hands. So either he's corrupting their meaning or they're corrupting the meaning. But either way, if you corrupt the meaning, you've corrupted the Quran. The text is now corrupt. It's not real, reliable. There goes the Quran. Why are you a Muslim, Adnan? Why do you keep following Muhammad? 
Um, so yeah, there's a uh, 378. So we've we've proven that the Quran has been corrupted. Islam is now uh, we can end that myth of the perfect preservation of the Quran because it's been corrupted. Did it here? Happened here tonight, folks. You saw it. Thank you, Adnan Rashid, for helping us corrupt yes. the Quran universally. Uh, let's see what else there is. I think he just goes into 4157 now. Okay, well, real quickly, as you're reading it, just remember these verses from chapter three. Chapter three, verses three and four. Chapter, same chapter, right? I'm using the same chapter against them. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Chapter 3, verse 50. Chapter 3, verses 113 and 114. And chapter 3, verse 199. Quickly, in chapter 3, verse 3 and 4 says, The Quran confirms the scripture between Muhammad's hands, and it mentions the Torah and the gospel. Jesus confirmed the Torah between his hands, and historically we know what that Torah is, because we have manuscript copies showing it's the Old Testament we read today. And chapter 3, verse 113, 114, and 3, 199 says, not all of them. Remember, even here it says a party, some of them. It says not all of them corrupted with their tongue. Many of them recite it the way it should be recited. Thank you, Adnan. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so, and for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them, and indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it, except the following uh, of assumption, uh, they did not kill him for certain. Uh, Sam, you see one word about uh, the corruption no. of the scriptures of the Christians? No, no I, and I, I, David, you know what's confusing me? Hmm. Uh, he's supposedly responding to your video, right? Yeah. No, no, not the video. Our response to his response, right? Mm -hmm. But we went through 4157 and yeah. that 4. So yeah. what is he doing? Uh, I, I think I think Adnan knows that it's the 99-1 rule. Remember the 99-1 oh, rule yeah, that I yeah. said, right? If, you, if you're yeah, talking yeah, yeah. to 100 people and one person is going to figure out that you're spouting nonsense, then you can just ignore him as long as you mislead the 99. That's the sort of bedrock rule oh, of, okay. of Islam. I think he's going with that. I mean, how many of his fans are actually going to go and watch us completely wreck uh, the idea that this is referring to the corruption of our text? Um, very, very uh, few. Yeah. And so he can continue misleading people and thinking that this is a, a refutation. Guys, notice uh, these were all, let's see, I think that's it. Let's see if the, let's see if there's anything after this. This is their bust, guys. Their bust. Again, Adnan could have put any verses up here that he wants in his video. These are the ones he chose. And uh, that's it. That's Adnan's case that the Quran, now notice we can put verse after verse after verse showing that Allah confirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scriptures. Muslims will say, nope, all of that's wrong. Then they'll go to verses that have absolutely nothing to do with the corruption of, oh, they change it with their mouths. <laughs> and then you've got 4157, which doesn't say a word about our scriptures. These are the passages that are, clear, that are clearly declaring. Uh, and, and notice, categorical. He said this is categorical proof that that the our scriptures have been corrupted. This is again, dude. I would not. I would expect clearer reasoning from a second grader than we've got here. It's amazing stuff, man. I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, if guys, if Muslims, if pray, by the Holy Spirit, I pray you see this. If this is your best, you should be shaking in your boots. You should really should be shaking in your boots. Islam is a <clears throat> sinking ship, and it's a matter of time before the Lord completely destroys it and millions and millions of Muslims are set free from their shackles to this false prophet mm -hmm. and discover the true Son of God, Jesus Christ, their only hope of salvation. That's our prayer for you. I know you guys think we hate Muslims. We don't. I don't. No. I don't. I wouldn't be, I do don't. I wouldn't be doing this if uh, this is for Muslims. Yes. We do this We're for doing Muslims. It well, of course, because if I didn't care about Muslims, I'd say, hey, David, don't waste my time. I just want to talk about Bible topics, and I want to reach Christians. No, I do want to see Muslims get saved, because I know Jesus came to save all creatures, including Muslims. And I know not thousands, but millions will come to saving faith by the power of the Holy Spirit, using sinners like me and David for the glory of Jesus. And that's what we want to see. Muslims, you need to start praying. God, who are you? All this time I was taught all of the Quran is God, and Jesus is not the Son of God. I'm now open to whatever the truth is because I want to spend all eternity in your presence and not away from you. I'm crying out to you. Show me who you are. Reveal yourself to me. If Jesus is Son of God, I'm ready to accept him. And I promise you because Jesus is risen, he's alive. By his spirit, you'll come to know that Jesus is the Son of God who loves you and died for your salvation. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah, and guys, uh, if, we, uh, if we hated Muslims, then... We just let them go on being Muslims without yeah. ever bothering to tell them the truth. Because what 
how much more contempt could you have for a Muslim to let him go on following, dedicating his life to the most obvious false prophet in history and then to die in that state? Um, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Um, all right, let's go through. Uh, let's go through. I uh, uh, haven't covered the, the super chats, but let's go through some super. Ch- all right. Th- go let's ahead. go through some super chats and we'll close out. Um, Abraham, by the way, guys, we're going to be on again tomorrow, but we'll be looking at the comments from the Muslims on the video. So Adnan did a really horrible job. Um, Mufasil did a really horrible job. We'll see if anyone could do better. Uh, Abraham Tekel in the super chat. Thank you, brother. Um, Peterson Levinsky Ogene says, Adnan knows both of you are smart debaters and he dares to bring those verses as a response to David's challenge. Just proves the motive of Adnan wasn't to respond to David, but to reassure the Muslims. 100%. That? It's right Amen. on the money. Mm-hmm. Right on the money. Um, uh, Esla, es, Boa says, this is for Sam. All right, Sam, there's a super chat for you. All right, what does uh, it say? Uh, Nothing. She just says, this is for Sam. Oh, God bless you. Thank yeah. you. Lord bless you, sister. But Dan said, uh, according to the Quran, Muhammad is a false prophet. See, he's quoting the Quran. Yeah. Uh, Jojo Momster says, please write something from the clay birds. I don't know what that means. Something about the clay birds? Uh, well, chapter 3, verse 50 and 5, 110 shows that Allah <clears throat> shares his power to create and give life with Jesus, which is an apocryphal fable, but in parroting it, let me explain to you the dilemma. Muhammad is hearing these Christians parroting these apocryphal fables as historical fact, but he doesn't understand, folks, in parroting that apocryphal fable that doesn't come from the first century eyewitness accounts, which is the only gospels, only material that comes from the eyewitnesses is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All these other sources, even someone like Bart Ehrman will admit second, third, fourth, fifth century. Okay, but notice the irony of it. Muhammad parrots a story that's not historical, but he thinks it's historical, where Jesus takes a clay bird, breathes into it, and animates it. And that mimics how Allah creates the first man. If you go to chapter 38 of the Quran, verses 71 to 74, I'm giving you the references, chapter 38, verses 71 to 74, specifically 71 to 72, it says, Allah created Adam from clay, teen, same word, used of Jesus fashioning, creating actually, a bird from clay, breathed into Adam, his spirit, Obviously, to an- animate him. So Allah shares his unique power to create and breathe life with Jesus, making Jesus a co-creator and partner with Allah. And yet Muslims still want to convince us that the Quran only presents a mere human Jesus. That again shows you the incoherent babble of Muhammad. He wants to affirm enough things about Jesus to get Christians to consider him, but then deny other things. But the things he affirms shows Jesus is more than a man, equal to his own God in creating and giving life. Thank you, Muhammad, for parroting that fable. We thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, we have uh, <laughs> we have Walter who said, uh, rest in peace, Quran. <laughs> and then Jojo Monster, uh Oh, oh, no, no. As far as I think, I think Jojo Momster, because because here she said, please write something from a lot. So I think she was uh, oh. I think she was talking about when I'm writing the revelations and so on, right from the clay birds and from a lot. So you completely missed the point on that one, Sam. Shame on you. Um, I apologize, sister. Please don't stone me. And then, uh, and Cheryl R. said uh, uh, this is to write something from a law. And Lucy said this is uh, to write something from a law. Peterson Levinsky said this is from a law. Uh, we had Tatiana J, uh, Vedanch a bunch of times, Ready Made, uh, Eslis Boa. Um, uh, Vedanch quotes, uh, uh, gives some references. Who sends disbelievers astray? Quran says Allah, 267, 1797. And Satan, eight, uh, 1983 and 7, 16 to 18. That sounds like it's from that list on answering Islam, where it has the questions and then shows how the Quran contradicts itself. Uh, J.O. says why this is fraud, because it's a desperate uh, try from a pseudo-intellectual to try to fit an inferior and sub-intelligent text to fit with a divine text and make it eatable uh, for the not-so-knowledgeable. That's actually a good description of uh, what uh, what's going on uh, with, def- with trying to make the Quran account for the Bible. Uh, first last says, Adnan, you clearly have time to respond to these videos, so why don't you have time to take Sam up on his debate challenge? What are you afraid of? And uh, yeah, I mean, guys, I mean, we're, yeah, we're we're all, we're all locked up. I'm assuming Adnan, I'm assuming that's why Adnan's making videos about us. He's got some time on his hands. But uh, yeah, he, he can come on here. He can come on here. We'll even arrange the time because he's in the UK. We'll even arrange the time to make it uh, make it easier for him. Um, 
Kevin Riggs, uh, Vedan, Sean C, Truth Seeker, uh, Arlen. Arlen says, how soon is your book, David? Uh, Arlen, uh, don't try to distract me when I'm killing it on YouTube, which is what I'm, I'm That's doing That's right, right bro. Come on. Um, <laughs> Uh, J.O. said, uh, we had Hindu historian, uh, J.O. If ever, uh, J.O. said, if everybody loved each other, we would not need military. If we were clean, we would not need porn. If we were all clean, there would be no poverty, uh, in the world. Um, Sophia Films, Cheryl R. Cheryl R. says, God blesses us daily through Act 17 and Shimonian's YouTube channels, uh, and ministries. Thank you. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Gary Pearson said, Muslims trust Jesus for salvation. That's some good advice. Jim Tan said, continue the good work and God bless David and Sam. Lisa Luck said, Jesus loves us. Uh, LVG said, 100. Um, I'm not reading all these. I'm trying just trying to make sure I get everyone here. Uh, Kyokushin Karate, Texas. See you there. Will G says, Kyokushin Kai, baby. Yep. Mas Oyama. Masa Tatu Oyama. That, that stuff would crush Bruce Lee, man. Uh, yeah. Willie G said, peace and love to all. Uh, Nick Brunel uh, said, beat the like button lightly with a toothbrush. <laughs> uh, let's go to guys. Beat the, beat the, uh, beat the, beat the like button lightly with a toothbrush. Daniel 514 said, the gospel is the New Testament. Duh. Come on, Muslims. Yeah. And, and guys, one of the important things to take away is, is, the only way to reconcile what the Quran says about the Quran saying the Quran says that Jesus received the gospel, but the Quran also re refers to the gospel as a text that, that Christians had in the seventh century. The only way to reconcile that is not the way that Muslims do it, right? Muslims want to say, oh, that must mean that the Quran is saying that the Christians still had this book of Jesus in the seventh century. No, that's ridiculous. There's We have no record anywhere of this book of Jesus, right? The exactly. only way to reconcile these claims would be to do exactly the way that Christians do it, right? Namely, that you could talk about Jesus having the gospel and preaching the gospel and speaking the gospel and so on. But also, if you're referring to text, you can have a book that's called the gospel. And so the only way to make sense of this historically would be that the Quran is doing that, which Christians do, right? They'll, they'll say in Jesus, you know, came with the gospel and he's preaching the kingdom and stuff like that. The Bible also ha has gospels in it, right? The gospels. They can it can be a text, right? Again, go gospel just means good news. It could be a message. It could be a, it can be a book. So that's the only way to make sense of what the Quran is saying. What Muslims are doing, you can see, they're just massacring their text. They are absolutely massacring the text to try and make sense of this. Um, the Neh too said, David, I think Zucker Knight can answer you. He is a genius. <laughs> He's joking. He's joking. These are over. Yeah. Uh, Google user said even Muhammad was an apostate. Um, Legend says, uh, David, who do you think from the top Muslim apologetics will give the best answer? Any idea what they might find to say? Love you guys. That's the thing. I mean, I debated Shabir Ali on this. Uh, what what you're seeing now is is pretty much what there is, right? All you can all you can do is twist Allah's words and try and try to try to twist the meaning into something that's referring to corruption, and then you have to ignore all of the clear verses, not just from the Quran but also in the Hadith, um, which which talk about the, the the preservation of the Torah and the Gospel, and no one being able to corrupt Allah's words. And so you just have to distort and hope that no one is there to point it out. But we will be there to point it out because we're locked up because of coronavirus. Yeah. We got Shrewd, we locked up? Shrewd Shack, uh, Steven Universe, uh, Draw Skeeter. Um, that's kind of a long, <laughs> that's kind of a detailed question we're not going into right now. It said, David Wood, is it possible to lose your salvation as a Christian? Uh, yeah, we'd have to do do something. Yeah, that's another topic that. for another yeah. time, yeah. yeah. Aaron Storm says, uh, God bless God bless you, David Wood and Co. Jivko. Georgiev said, so proud of you guys. I'm struggling with Mark 1018. Can't fully understand it. Need help. Thanks. Well, that's actually, that's actually, uh, that's actually live stream worthy. We might want to put out something on, uh, these common, uh, common objections and, and spend some time doing that. Um, Marilyn Murphy said, uh, Dr. Wood, uh, Dr. Wood knows about the false prophet psychosis. Muslims should also read the people versus Muhammad, a psychological analysis by JK, uh, Shailen. It's very enlightening. Uh, Alwin Furtado said, Anand's argument that only the core doctrines must be unequivocal is absurd. If the corruption of the gospel was important to Muhammad, he should be unequivocal about it. Yep, that's a problem. Yep. And again, uh, as as I pointed out, that's uh, 
what do you what do you mean that's not important that's that's one of the articles of faith there um, Alex said, uh, hi, David and Sam, please. What do you recommend to get better with logic, reasoning, etc.? Uh, resources, tips, as you have a PhD and taught it. Thank you. God bless you both. Uh, well, it kind of depends on how far you want to go. I mean, if you're, if you're talking about like uh, formal logic and the probability calculus and so on, you got, you got to get some books. Um, you got to get some serious, uh, serious books. If you're just trying to learn, I mean, if, if, if you're really for, for what would be useful as far as if you're talking about, you know, reasoning with people and so on probably um probably learning some some of the more more informal more informal uh logic and reasoning so um fortunately there are there are plenty of books on logic and reasoning and they'll go through different kinds and so you can kind of look for you know whatever it is you want but informal fallacies are are They'd be more useful than than like deductive fallacies and trying to uh, trying to learn those. But mainly, I'd say get a good book or go to a website, but but get a book that has a lot of exercises in it, right? Because you have people who will just learn a bunch of names of fallacies and so on, and they don't know how to use them, and then they just end up embarrassing themselves. Uh, if you get a book that has a bunch of problems and and uh, examples in it, then what it is is you learn a bunch of you know fallacies or things like that, and then you you have to go through a bunch of problems and you have to spot the fallacy and stuff. And it, it's kind of in the course of that, that you actually learn how to, how to use them. Um, Hindu historian said thumbnail reminded me of the live stream that you did uh, last year about Muhammad's death from poison. I, I think, was there any, was there ever any Muslim response to that other than threats and insults? Um, I think it's the same. I think it's the same. Uh, I think it's the same thumbnail. I just picked a thumbnail off my uh, computer, but uh yeah, on Muhammad's death, there's there's no real there, there's no real response to that, right? Yeah. Uh, we 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 we've we've been through the responses. It's oh, but it uses two different words for aorta, and so yeah. you can say stuff like that. But I mean, as as a Muslim, you don't have to regard that as a as a knockdown argument. It's just really really strange that Allah says if Muhammad does this, I'm going to kill him in this way, and then Muhammad dies saying that that happened to him. Um, very very interesting stuff all right guys well um gonna go ahead and wrap things up now we will be yeah. back tomorrow we'll tomorrow through. right we'll be back with the comments and then uh interestingly thursday i'll be on with jay warner wallace all right he's the man yeah he's a top-notch uh expert on political social economic islam he's phenomenal what who are you yeah, talking about Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. was thinking of Bill Warner, dude. Yeah, I said. No, no, no. I know. You think he's anyone... awesome too? Uh, right. Yeah, you think that anyone with the name Warner in their yeah, name man, is the I same person? It. Yeah. No, no. But Warner is phenomenal. He was, you know, atheist who, uh, because he knows evidence, yeah. became a Christian and he worships Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Phenomenal show. That's yeah. gonna be. Yeah. Jay Warner Wallace is a cold, uh, is cold case detective. You know, it's funny. I was yeah. actually watching. Uh, I forget what it was. Some, some. Uh, it was like 2020 or, or one of those Shit. one of those programs and i was watching just one day and then they and they said so we we talked to a cold case detective and it was, it was jay warner wallace and i was like yeah, uh, i saw him too yeah i saw him on one of these shows and i said darn that is him he was mm -hmm. so he's he's great praise yeah. god for him and yeah. guys do pray for me just let me share this with you guys you guys don't understand whenever david wood plans to take on islam uh -huh. the spiritual attack is unbelievable i have been under attack since last week resurrection sunday when he told me that he wanted to do stuff. Satan's been trying to attack me, discourage me, because he knows where my heart is. It's first with Jesus and my kids. I need a miracle. Ask Jesus to show up, protect my children, protect me, and refresh me and rejuvenate me and, and use me to glorify him and pray for David, because imagine the attacks he's going through because he's bringing down Islam like no other man in history. So glory to Jesus. We need your prayers, especially for our children, his spouse, my kids in Jesus name. Yeah, Sam, we've talked about this before. Who does what we do and is, isn't getting uh, annihilated oh, by oh, everything, oh. everything else in life will, will go horribly wrong as soon as you start, man, you as soon you start doing this. Put, uh, David, put it this way, man. If it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here doing this. I'd probably be locked up somewhere. Or I just, you know, it's Jesus who, who gives us the grace to save us and preserve us in spite of what Satan wants to do. He's more real than we can imagine. Without him, I couldn't do this. Yeah, uh, but you, you probably should be locked up somewhere anyway. Yeah, um, that's true, for other reasons, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, that's true um, for other reasons. A couple more, uh, couple more uh, final final comments here. Uh, Glocken, Glockenstein 
0869 says, uh, Dear Sam, Halal Hogan is my favorite. Love, <laughs> love Allah. So it's Allah saying that uh, that he loves Halal Hogan. And we have uh, we have Murray here, says, David and Sam, keep being awesome. Apologetics has really helped strengthen my faith throughout the years. God bless. Uh, Connor Terrell says, God bless you all. Keep up the good work. And Luigi 2K says, this is for Sam too. Thank you guys for caring about misguided Muslims. God bless uh, God bless you and those future Christians. All right, guys. Well, we've once again been on a lot longer than than planned. I thought that little video of Adnan was going to be uh, super easy to go through. I mean, it is easy. What we just end up talking about. Uh, there's there's so much. There's so many refutations available whenever Adnan says anything. But I'll make some nice uh, nice shorter videos. Um, all right. Well, we'll see you all tomorrow, Lord willing, and then on Thursday with uh, Jay Warner Wallace. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Come, Lord Jesus.